welcome to the Scratch Guest Academy. We're back again with Horror Scoops. I'm obsessed with this game. Um, so please check out all the links that are coming up in chat now. Um, a huge, huge thank you um, to our wonderful sponsors in the form of Bird in the Storm and also Mage and Press, um, who we can do this without. And as Sprout has been teasing, it's news that we've got um, a new sponsor on the way. Um, otherwise, Sammy can't be here today, but please check out Sammy's link before um, uh, we go round. Um, I know Scrap will pop those in chat as well. Otherwise, um, I'm going to hand over to the very lovely Hans. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. I'm over here watching chat. Chat is enjoying the opening of this show. Everything is fine. What could go wrong? I mean, Sammy's in chat. I mean... She's fine. Everything's fine. Um, this is Horoscopes, and I am just happy to be here with y'all. We're going to start by going around and saying hi to everybody, and then we'll talk a little bit about the show and get started with a horoscope. So, hey, Sarah, how you doing? I am good. My name is Sarah L. Kinney. You can find me at this on Twitter and pretty much all of the other spots. I play Cameron in this game, and I can't wait to jump back into the action. Cameron is a flannel wearing combat boot wielding metalhead who has recently purchased like imagine like guitar riffs every time you hear her speak and she's recently purchased a bunch of new books on bigfoot because this week our crew is um i don't know gonna go do some hunting in the woods she's wearing her camouflage flannel this week so she blends in with the trees Okay, that's on me. I spent like a minute chasing my cursor around the screen so I could figure out how to unmute myself. So, uh, that, that, that's on me. And next, we're going to talk to Allison, who we missed last week. Hey, everybody. It is great to be back. I'm Allison. You can find me on Twitter at Allison Robinson with two L's and a Y. And I play Josie Conrad, uh, who is the manager read mom of this team of uh, cub reporters and is also some sort of hacker, super spy, something, something who also maybe sees ghosts. I've been informed since missing last week that she is also currently possessed and sleeping. So that's what happens when you miss an episode, apparently. Sorry, Sammy. Um, but I'm super curious to find out what happens here in a few minutes when presumably I wake up. Here's hoping. I have news. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll go on to that in a second, I suppose. Hi, Alice, how are you? Oh, hi. That's made me think now. What is going to happen to Sammy? Is is Sammy Bigfoot? The conspiracies begin. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Alice. I'm also a white rabbit pick. I play... Um, Darcy, that's it. I play Darcy um, Moretti, and she is a soft little being and is enjoying having friends, like proper friends and a proper job for the first time, even though her brother is a complete... We don't like Marco, basically. We don't like Marco. And I think the only person that's seen something slightly different about Darcy is Josie, who is currently possessed. Um, Otherwise, we're all good. I'm going to go find Okay, now, last week when Allison was gone, I talked about how much I enjoy the enthusiasm Allison injects, or Allison injects at the beginning of the streams. So while we have Sammy gone, we've got to talk about Sammy. One of the things that's fun about Sammy's openings is she has a way about her. It's just like, usually she comes out and goes, oh, hi. And then, you know, the funny thing is like Sammy's energy level is here and Lewis's energy level is here and it's like a crazy balance in the stream. Um, I appreciate Lewis. Lewis has many people in the best friend tier. He's really like a go-getter. He's probably an up-and-comer. Some people have said that he's going to take over the team while Josie is off and doing some other sleeping things, but I mean, who really knows? Probably not. Um, especially because there's this weird message on the screen. So we'll see what's going on there in a second. Um, but... The one thing I don't want to do is do what I did last week and then like give this big hype for Sammy and they go, oh, hey, Mal, how's it going? But hey, Mal, how are you doing? Oh, hi, it's Mal. Uh, I'm playing Sullivan O'Callaghan, our hashtag urban druid. Uh, he's pretty chill. He's kind of like food dad. He cooks for everyone all the time. Uh, maybe we'll get to see some fun 
druid stuff out in the forest. Oh, Scrat wants me to do that. <laughs> oh, hey, I didn't see it there. I'm Mal. You can find me on Twitter at Mal Hedale. We'll be playing horror scoops tonight. <laughs> That's good. Okay, now we have to talk about pockets because pockets is present in this shot. So we better talk about pockets. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, Sullivan has a ferret named Pockets, and Pockets likes to hitch rides and be in places he shouldn't be. And uh, Scrat also meant a different thing that you were supposed to mention. He wants you to mention your new. Oh, role. oh, right. oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the tweet, the tweet went out today. I will be joining Doors of Dunera, Alice's long-term game, as a permanent cast member. I'm so excited. It's going to be I'm very excited. good. And the most important question is, what is your Inanakwa? And I don't want to know now, because that's the fun of finding it on a stream. But uh, I decided to do that, because that's all I think about. Okay, so we're in a show. This show is taking place at the beginning of July. It's July 3rd, 2019, in San Francisco. Um, in game universe, for Sammy's sake, I want to just point out that the U.S. national war women's team is crushing the World Cup in soccer, just like crushing it in an amazing way. So um, that's happening in our game time. It already happened in real life. Um, we are playing the Cypher system. There are donation incentives where you can increase this horror track. Our new fun house rule is whenever somebody misses the stream, the horror meter goes up by one. I swear at the end of the game, I'm going to explain that to people and it will make sense. But currently, the number is two. If anybody rolls a one or two, bad stuff happens and horror mode activates. If you want to see that number go higher, you can always donate towards the stream, in which case the number can go higher. If you want the number to go lower, there is probably somebody who will assist you with that. I'm not in charge of that department. I just make the number go higher. So I'm getting scratch got you covered. So, and that's everything I got to talk about there. Let's do a horoscope. This is the Virgo episode. So if you're a Virgo, just in case that happens to be you, you can feel particularly connected to your memories or family today, dear Virgo, and the desire to take care of loved ones can be motivating. Today, Venus moves into harmony with your sign, putting you in a good position with friends or networks. The solar eclipse awakened your need to connect with others, and now you have Venus helping smooth the path for you in this direction. An interesting note that we did not bring up last game is in the game universe on July 2nd, at about 12.30 in the afternoon, there was a lunar eclipse, no, sorry, solar eclipse, and a new moon in San Francisco. Fun fact. Has no bearing on anything, I'm sure, in a game based on the horoscopes, but just something to think about. So if you're a Virgo, think about those family connections. Think about people that mean something to you or don't. It's just a horoscope. You don't have to follow what it says. We have the horoscopes, horoscopes team, for once not caught in the middle of a cliffhanger mostly. Um, everybody's totally fine and they're driving along in a van on the way to Santa Cruz. If you go from San Francisco to Santa Cruz, you've got to go down the coastal highway or else go around and through lots of winding ways. Um, I'm going to say in this case, because it's the way I'm most familiar with driving to Santa Cruz, that we have gone well, actually, you know what? Let's do it the fun way. Let's go down the coastal highway. It's so much more scenic there. Do you guys get around? Do you think you, any of you have been to Santa Cruz before? Because Lewis definitely has. How about Sarah? How about Cameron? I think Cameron took a outdoor rock climbing class once where they also taught like the basics of how to use a compass. But she took that like two years ago and so it's been a while since she's been really out of town proper. Okay. And uh, the thing I love about Santa Cruz is it's not that far from San Francisco. It's far enough to be a pain when there's traffic like there is today, um, but not too much because we're driving early. It's like 5 a.m. while everybody's in the van. But there's still a lot of traffic for 5 a.m. There's a lot of people going south. It's July 3rd. In America, of course, July 4th is a huge holiday. So we've all got to prepare for that and see things get blown up. So while people have this opportunity to go out of town, they tend to while they can. And if you live in San Francisco, the rule is to get out of town as soon as possible, whenever you can, because everybody else is thinking the same thing. So y'all are working on that. Um, let's talk about Josie. Has Josie been to Santa Cruz before? Uh, Josie has definitely been to Santa Cruz. And in fact, um, although there was probably no overlap, I think Josie taught rock climbing at that same place where Cameron, uh, where, where Cameron got to try it for maybe the first time. Um, 
Awesome. I apologize for the oversight because I just realized that although it is good that Josie's been to Santa Cruz, that will factor in later because Josie is also asleep. So that's my bad. Um, you know, totally paying attention. Everything's Are fine. you sure? No, I'm not really paying very much attention, but I'm trying. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's keep going around the circle to Allison. Let's talk about Darcy. Has Darcy ever been to Santa Cruz? Darcy has always wanted to go to Santa Cruz. But it's sort of that thing when she drove into the city or was dropped off effectively. Um, she sort of watched it go by and then because she didn't have a car of her own and not really enough money to pay rent all the time, she never got the chance to get herself there. But it's somewhere she's always wanted to go, but when she was with her family, not necessarily allowed because it was seen as time wasting. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good opportunity today, though. Lewis is in the van. Lewis is fine. Lewis is sleeping, as far as anybody can tell, in the back seat. You think you caught him may maybe at one point, Sullivan, doing some texting, but seems to otherwise have eyes closed on this journey. So has Sullivan been to Santa Cruz before? I would imagine he has. I would also imagine it's been a while because also not having his own car. But I think especially because we know that the forest is out there, that he probably has been at least once for sure. Yeah, we're going to learn a lot about California, like Nash, uh, and let's say like natural features, geography and so forth today. The really fun thing about Northern California is you can go from super developed city to like rolling suburbs. And then there's just 100 foot tall trees, these like gigantic old redwoods. So at the part that you guys are starting to drive, you're on the coast. So you get a little bit of like a sea salt smell and the air is like very crisp, cool. But also there's this contrast where every time the wind blows in a particular direction, you get this very earthy, loamy smell. Um, it's very fresh and it's like, it feels old when you drive up towards Santa Cruz because those trees are immense. There's no light. It's very clearly like stepping back a little ways away from the city. So, you know, maybe it's a little bit cleansing. Things are good there. So we're driving in this van Traffic is again heavy for this time of day, being about 5 a.m. It's a weekday, so maybe, yeah, but as you're going down that way, it's just, it's slow. Everything seems to be going fine. How's Sullivan handling the wheel? Uh, I would imagine fine. Cool. He's, he and knows how to drive, he just doesn't sure. have a car. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, additionally, what kind of snacks has Sullivan packed for this 5 a.m. drive? Uh, God, you know, I actually, this is something that nor normally I would think about this outside of stream and I totally forgot with like doing the recap and all the other stuff. Um, uh, I for, for breakfast burritos. I think for sure Sullivan has like a huge uh, plastic container of trail mix that he put together himself because you don't buy the, tr the pre-mix stuff because uh, that's good car food. Um, you know what? I'm going to say Sullivan's this kind of guy. Each person for today has a little like takeout box packed individually for each of them that he thought up. Uh, that's super cute. And I'm going to need to know at least one ingredient that you put in Cameron's box. Um, <laughs> I think I think Cameron got the little hot dog cut to be an octopus. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. It's so good. You gotta love that. Okay. Bravo. Bravo. And what Perfect. is Pockets currently doing inside of this van? Uh, I think Pockets is asleep with either uh, Lewis or Josie. Okay. Um, did you guys bring Josie, who is very comfortably sleeping in a bed upstairs in horoscopes? Yeah, Cameron says Can't yes. Can't leave mom behind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did not expect that to be a thing during this. So that's fine. We will just <laughs> deal with that as we go. So you've got I can just a, see this bunch seat. like carrying me down the stairs to yeah. put me in the back of the van. It was me. You know, it had to be me. Yes. Thank and you. So I imagine I imagine he like crouched down and like full on. Uh, over the shoulders. Like fireman's yeah. carry. Fireman, yeah. yeah. Or we took a limb each. Yep. Cameron, like, grabbed a leg. Darcy got the other <laughs> leg. So that you weren't, like, totally scuffing up your shoes. Nice. Wow. Or manager, you have to look presentable. 
cannot wait until you guys end up in the middle of the forest, like four wheeling with at least one <laughs> asleep person in the car. It's gonna be great. Okay, so with that new information in the uh, the story, we're gonna talk about. Well, I don't actually have to cut away now, but let's talk a little bit about how things are going for Josie. So Josie, you're asleep. And that's a really simple definition of what's been happening. During our last game, you got a nice meeting with Sophia, who seems to be the mother of Agatha. Mm -hmm. And she's a ghost. You've not had the experience of a ghost being able to talk to you. That seems loud. There we go. You've not had the experience of a ghost being able to talk to you before, so this is pretty different. And as far as you can tell, based on what Sophia has told you, it's because she's a witch. And she's been waiting specifically for this moment to talk to you. There was a period of time, time seems really fluid right now, but there was a period of time where she said she was going to borrow your body. And to you, it didn't seem like she was gone for very long, but you're standing in a room that is very much like my streaming space. It is just black. You have black everywhere, and you've been standing by yourself for a little while when Sophia reappears. And she tells you, okay, Josie, we've got to handle your thing now. My, my thing. Yeah. I, sorry, this is my first time in limbo, Sophia. You're going to have to, which, which thing? I just want to go through this very slowly. Now, do you remember back when you first started seeing ghosts? Do you remember the incident and how things happened? Of course. Yeah, so I re remember were, very well. Right. There were some other people with you, right? And Josie, kind of very unaccustomed to seeing this from her, but she almost shivers like she's trying to hold something back. She bites her bottom lip. Yeah. Yeah, there were. So you, you were hit with a spell, basically. Somebody cast a witch's spell on you. And that's what happened to everybody else. So, okay, there's not, there's not an easy way to say this. You're not fully alive. <laughs> there's not an easy way to hear that either. Sophia, what do you mean? I'm, I'm breathing. I'm, my heart's beating. I'm, sure. what are you talking about? Do you know anybody else who can see ghosts? No. Okay. Agatha can, but she's a witch, and she's trained for that. That's that's something that's part of like how magic works for her. Um, your Finn Cameron might someday, you know, if things go really well for her. That might happen. Um, your soul hmm. is missing right now. Hmm. It's still around. I mean, it's not lost, but it's not with you. You know... I, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, that totally checks out. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't think of the, a way this would be easy for anybody, but you need to get it back before something happens. If you died like this, I mean, you would be a ghost forever. Is, is that what happened to my team? So... They're, they're trapped like you are, but not exactly the same. If you save them, they're not going to come back. Oh. But that's but... peace. And right now, the thing they're doing is actively going to hurt your friends because they're being used and contained like a battery. By who? by a witch. So I kind of told your friends about this, but you all have a group that's targeting you right now. 
there's a group of witches and they are lost. I can't think of a better way to say it. They're not, they're not human. They're not in control of their actions. They don't have their own power, but they can take other people's souls. They can take other people's energy. And that is what they've done to your friends, your team. What do I need to do, Sophia? Yeah, I kind of felt like that was where you were going to go with it. Um, we're already pretty much right here. You're going to need to be reconnected with where your soul is. And when that happens, you're going to have to fight hard. If you can break them free, everything you do is going to make that witch weaker. It's going to make things easier for your friends in the future. And I mean, you should care about where your soul goes at some point. I don't, I don't think anybody really knows what happens, but this isn't it. As Sophia says, fight very hard. Josie's right hand just uh, sort of reflexively reaches around behind her. And presumably there's nothing there. Is there something there? Well, she would normally be armed if this were the real world, but... I tell you what, let's make a roll and just don't roll a one or a two. <laughs> okay. Just any roll? Anything that's not a one or a two. <laughs> okay. Maybe on a d20, preferably, yeah. There you go. 11. So there is. There is a gun there. It is Josie's gun. Uh-huh. I like this and I kind of hold it up if that's how you fight it then yeah that's one of the ways okay um, take a moment just try to really calm your mind when it happens it's going to happen right away there's no space here so when we go we're just going to be there and and I, I don't even know how to, I'm not gonna help you. I have a different thing I have to do. I can't afford to be seen doing this. You can see that Josie's jaw tighten up. Okay, so just I have quiet my mind. Yeah, while you're here, and your friends are there. I need to be where Agatha is because I have a feeling things are going to get bad now. Okay. All right. Did I tell you I could see the future a little bit back when I was alive? Did I mention that? Maybe. Okay. This is our best chance. All right. Sophia. Yeah. Thank you. And if anything happens to me, will you just let them know? I mean, <laughs> my new team. Um, that even though I only knew them a little while, it was really an honor to get to be with them and that I believe in them. Just, just that, let them know I believe in them. Okay, Josie, um, I don't want to lie to you at all. If I can help it, if you die, I'm not going to be able to talk to your team. Okay, okay. Um, do you want to hug? Um, yeah. Okay, let's go do this. And Josie steps up and puts her arms around Sophia. And even as she does, she's, you know, that getting ready for, for the, uh, to sort of drop in is something she's done before. And her mind in fact flashes back to the last time that she did, which was when 
the rest of them were lost. And she feels herself, and maybe it's just the breeze coming through the windows of the van, or maybe it's not, but she feels the wind uh, from the helicopter doors open. It's hot, humid uh, in the sky over Columbia. And she looks out the window and she can see the lights passing by in the uh, jungle and in the villages below. And she looks up and in her night vision goggles, she can see the members of her team sitting around her and, and she just feels ironically for someone who's about to fall into the middle of a firefight, she feels completely safe and completely focused and completely at ease and she's ready to go all right well, as josie closes her eyes and like you know you can feel things just changing around you sophia whispers in your ear just free him josie set him free and this is of course our transition to the other group but go josie okay we're going to talk about the people in the van. So Sullivan. Hi. The driving has been boring. It's standard commute driving, mm -hmm. nothing fun at all for anybody. But um, as you head down, you've gotten into a park. You're going through the Wilder Ranch State Park. So you're along the coast. You're going to hit Natural Bridges State Park in a little while as you go. But you're just driving down the coast and getting closer and closer to Santa Cruz proper. And then... Let's say we go past that. We're going to go up and to the north. I think it's Highway 17. I can't tell from this map because I'm using a really cool hand-drawn map. But it's the Henry Cowell Redwood State Park. This is where you've actually been directed. So you were told to go through Santa Cruz and then cut back up towards the Redwoods because that's where things are really going on. There's a small town called Felton. And the town of Felton is where the Bigfoot Discovery Museum is. The information you've gotten was there was a sighting along Highway 1, which of course you've just gone off. And on the other hand, this Bigfoot Discovery Museum seems to be like a good point of contact. I guess that Bill knows somebody who actually uh, is expecting to see you a little bit later today. The person who runs the museum, I'm looking for his name, it's Mark Hansen. So look forward to meeting Mark Hansen when you go to the Bigfoot Discovery Museum. But you're driving out in the Redwoods, and at the time that you are now looking around, Traffic is totally thinned out. It's just you. It's very chill. You've got 100-foot trees all around you, beautiful redwood smell wafting into the car. The trail mix is good. Pockets is not doing anything he's not supposed to. Things seem very calm, which is, of course, when all the bad things happen. So with that, the sky is darkening. It was already, you know, like starting to break sunny, but we're on the coast, so there's usually some clouds. The clouds have gotten a lot thicker in a way that strikes you as very unnatural and sudden. And there is a very clear verse that you can hear inside of the van. It is, at last I catch you all alone. As you travel far from your home, I call with hatred from the sky, a lance to strike those who defy. And you're gonna make a speed test as the van is hit with lightning. I mean, potentially. Okay. So driving is probably not a skill you have, I'm assuming. Nope, driving is not a skill I took. <laughs> driving is and not a skill I took when this. I got to tier two. That's okay. So you're making a driving test. The difficulty is four. Your car is about to be hit by lightning. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend effort. Sure. You're a tier two, so that's potentially two levels of effort. Uh, I think I'm only going to spend one level of effort. No problem. no problem. So that puts that to that. And I think I've got it all set up. In a second, I'm going to ask Cameron always... and Darcy what they're doing, so just be ready for that. I failed. Okay, so Cameron, what are you doing as you see this blinding flash of light and hear this ringing verse in the back of the van? I think it, Cameron has been engrossed in a book in her seat in the car. She brought like 40 pounds of backpack 
And I think 30 pounds of that is book. And as this crackling voice comes over the speaker, at first she thinks maybe it's the music she has in her ears and then she pops it out. And I don't know, her, her first reaction is like, ah, oh, fuck, fuck, okay, um, magic with magic. And she will just like put her hands up uh, in like an X over her body and like think as hard as she can in this moment and try to see if any magic comes out of her. Because she's still trying to figure this out and doesn't really know how it works. Okay, so while you try that, let's look at your character sheet real quick. So it's going to be an intellect roll if you're trying to use magic. Okay. And you have cool magic skills. So let's see what we want to use here. I don't know if I have anything particularly useful as like a defense item. Um, well, you could try to do a ward on the van and do an energy shield. Or else you could just try to do some sort of counter magic -y thing. Can I try and do, so Cameron has a, um, I think what we see is like, as like the lightning starts to hit and Cameron puts her hands up in an X, we almost see like this glittering gold light over her. Um, and we realize in this moment that like, there's a magical ward of some sort that's specific to Cameron and hits her. Is it possible for me to roll some kind of magic thing to like expand that ward out and have it cover the van? Yep. I'm going to say what you're going to have to do is you're going to spend the initial for ward, and then I'm going to charge you two extra for extending it to the van. Okay. I like that. Do I need to roll anything for you? I don't believe so. I need to look up what the cost of ward is initially. It's, so it's, it's an not, enabler. Yeah, so probably nothing. It's probably just you have armor. And if that's the case, then you're probably you're just paying two. Boop, boop, boop. Pushing buttons, looking up things in a book. Okay. Ward. Yep, just an enabler. You always have one in it, one in armor. So right now you're giving the van one armor. That's going to cost you two points, we say. Perfect. So I think we see first the glittery um, golden protective light over Cameron, and then it shoots out uh, of her body, and we see it cover over the truck. And let's talk about Darcy. How's Darcy doing? Is Darcy awake or asleep? Um, Darcy was definitely awake. If there was like a window in the back of the van, then she would have been either doing I Spy with herself or playing Yellow Car. Um, and then when like the lightning struck, she'd probably sort of take a moment. And as the voice comes down, she tries to listen to every single word that it says. And just remembering things she's learnt over time. But as soon as Cameron starts to glow, she just sort of steps back and sort of presses herself up against this, the other side, the opposite side of the van. Um, okay. Just to make sure she's out of the way because she doesn't know what Cameron's doing. <laughs> Got it. So this lightning bolt was level four. So it's going to do four points of damage and we have removed one of them through armor. So you now have three lightning van damage. So your van is going to go off the road at this point. And again, Mal, I'm gonna make you make, for Sullivan, a driving roll, which is a speed roll. Okay, um, difficulty still four? The difficulty is still four, yes, I think so. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend effort again, and I'm also going to spend my reroll. Okay. Uh, I got a 19 on the first one. Yeah, so let's talk about this minor effect. So the focus that we have for Sullivan is, yeah, bu -bu -bum. what's the technical name? Hashtag Urban Druid comes down to speaks for the land. So you have a beautiful forest all around you. How do you do something that's more magical and about being a druid that helps you stop this car safely? Uh, I want uh, I want the grass to get thicker and everything to get it's like soft, but it's thick enough that it help stop the car from moving without being like a slamming into a tree or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So like yep. 
as the car is going, it just everything starts to grow around it to slow it down faster and faster. So you get like the the hills here are just like big mossy piles of redwood bark that have just fallen off trees, boughs, things like that. So the ground just kind of like swells up and pushes and it just like lifts the car off the ground so its wheels are still spinning as the car stops very safely. No one is hurt, no one gets jarred around at all. The van does not like traveling anymore. Like you, you aren't getting any sort of like engine sounds and all the lights are off on the dashboard. That sounds like a likely thing for when you get hit by lightning, right? So that's all going on. Is everyone okay? Um, uh, yeah, shit. Holy, holy shit. Um, I can't believe that worked. Or at least I, uh, I think it did. It worked. It, Y'all saw that too, right? Uh huh. <laughs> and Darcy's still like pressed, like arms out, trying to hold herself in the right place. Like, um, how, uh, <clears throat> how, how'd you, how'd you do that? You know what? Um, don't really know. I just, uh, thought about, like, I just thought about, like, protecting the truck and then the, the gold light shot out, I guess. That's, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I had magic lessons with my aunt in a dream last night, and apparently now I can shoot glitter out of my body. So that's, that's kind of all I got for you. So awesome. New Patreon you, goal. You, Cameron describes the campaign and recaps. You are <laughs> full of surprises, but I guess we're alive. So this is fine. I'm, um, and just sort of bangs on wherever like the, the, the driver's seat is. It's like, Solomon, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, uh, I think the car took all of most of that hit. And I think while everything else is going on, Pockets wakes up because, and he starts yelling in Ferret and Sullivan's holding a conversation with Darcy and he's also starting to hold a conversation with Pockets. He's like, no. No, yes, I think that was a witch. No. And just res like having two conversations at the same time. I don't think any one of us is going to look at you sideways for talking to an animal while you should be talking to people. I think that's how life works. Um, while all this is going on, you hear that same voice yet again. And it says, treasure stolen so long ago. As you return, feel my wind blow. Tis time you heed my distant shout and let your bright flame go now out. Lewis had started to rouse, and you hear a sound as, as he starts to sit up. You hear a... And as that wind blows, there's like a... of a, like, like a spark going out. And Lewis full on like a marionette with the strings cut slumps to the ground of the van at the full extension of his seatbelt. Sort of reaches out and tries to push him out like Lewis, Lewis and is like like taking him by the face and like slapping him on the side of the face like there's something wrong with Lewis. Lewis <laughs> like is just start shouting and shaking him. Yeah. So, while we deal with all of this going on, let's cut across to the dreamscape, the spirit world, and let's talk about what we see as we are looking at Josie. Hold on here. You guys know I'm going to mess this music up. and We got to see if I can get something like halfway decent here. Nope, that's that one again. You don't want to keep using the same song. Two or three more seconds. Mm, one more try. Yeah. I think this is going to work. Okay, so we have music. Josie, you're in another black space. The thing that's really different here is the room or the area, the, your surroundings. There are six people here. Give me a second here to scroll on my menu. You know them all. I'm sorry, there are five people here. Mm -hmm. There's Kendrick, Eric, Josh, 
and Cam and Josie. Everybody else is wrapped, like they're twisted. And what looks to you like a bright red ribbon that's pulled taut against their bodies. And they're in like contorted positions, like arm is caught, head is caught, you know, things like this. So they look like they're being suspended in space. Cam is holding you and you yourself do not seem to be caught that Josie, not this Josie. Mm -hmm. And the Josie that Cam is holding is unrestrained, but also just being held. <laughs> at the time where you get a chance to look at that for even just a second, there's another like twist of ribbon that pulls tight in the air and Lewis is there. Josie is in full on tactical mode at this point. Um, she's taken all of that in, but I'm trying to see out beyond the uh, just out beyond these six people now to see if there's anything else in this space with me. Go ahead and make an intellectual. The difficulty is going to be three. Okay. And you can use your perception skill on this because I think you can see danger, correct? Uh, yes. In Detect fact. danger, things like that. This is danger. And you said the difficulty is? Three. Okay. Yeah, this is a um, see the unseen that I'm using uh, and also danger sense. So yeah, they both work. Yep. Uh, not that great. Okay, it was really close. It was right there at the edge. So the problem is you've never had to deal with this before, and this is a yeah. lot. So the the things that are here in space are easily able to play with your senses. A moment later, after seeing all of these people suspended in air by these red ribbons, there is a presence behind you, and you can feel like a looming, like imagine someone was wearing a dress, like a, like they're gonna go to the Met Ball, Met Gala dress. It's just like this rising peak of black and it comes up so they have very square shoulders and then claw-like hands reaching out of it and long stringy natty hair hanging down, a long like sloping nose, wicked jagged teeth. And they're holding these red ribbons out like strings from their hands behind you. Mm -hmm. I spin around and uh, I've never let go of my handgun. So I'm, I'm leveling it at this person or creature. Uh, I'm assuming that because it's a circle around me, there's probably some of one of my friends behind this person, right? Um, so as best you can tell, you have no spatial dimensions. So all yeah. these people are on one side and this which is behind you on the other side. I see. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so uh, she spins around and the handgun is leveled at the witch. Uh, whatever you're doing, stop. all of the hand both hands come up and you can see all the strings kind of like pull up and suddenly all of the space around you has become very tight because everyone is directly around you mm -hmm. and if you turn and look a little bit to your left cam is right there josie is right there if you turn and look a little bit to your right lewis is right there and in lewis's hand is the tiniest tiniest stub of a candle I take the shot. I'll take as many as I can get off here, up to three if I can get them off. Let's start with a shot. And as we do this, you can use whatever you want to make it better. So we are at uh, enough of a tier where we can do effort two if you want to, so you can spend more effort on this. It's a speed roll to shoot a difficulty four witch. Okay. Uh, okay. 
So I think I'm doing this right. Here we go. <laughs> Another eight. Mm -hmm. It worked out fine, right? Yeah, so it good. did. Yeah, that's a success. So, yeah. So you got the shot off. And it's not like you hear an explosion or anything like that. You don't hear that, that a ricochet of gunfire. It's just mm -hmm. the gun shoots. Mm -hmm. And there's like a small, like a divot that gets put into this witch's body. And it does not seem to mind at all. Those big vicious teeth just keep coming down like knives. And the witch spreads the hands out again. And then suddenly crashes them together. And I need you to make a speed defense test because you're about to get crushed with all your friends. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. And the difficulty is... Um, let's go with four again, because you are defending against the witch. Okay. There's a theme here, sorry, the theme is four. Yeah. I... I have two... I think I have two auto successes and an advantage right now. Um, I'm going to use my advantage here. Ooh, uh, I got a 20 on the first one, so... That's how it works when you spend an advantage, right? So, yeah. okay. I, there goes the so, other one just since I since I spent it. That's good. Let's talk about Josie's special effects here. We would normally pick from something that's more works the system because that's Josie's focus. Do you think that works for you or do you want to do something more ghosty? I I think that um, as I, I see that that divot and I see it kind of ripple across the um, the, the odd non corporeal form of this which um there's it's it's hard to explain it's just an intuition i just i just know uh that there's something there there's uh it's almost like when um like her how she learned marksmanship in uh, in the army and things are moving you have to sort of lead things a little bit based on the distance and it it feels like that but um, but in a place where space has no meaning uh, it's a metaphor at best yeah so you've got the shot and what do you want to see happen with this 20 uh, I, I want to see this uh set if possible i, I want to see the witch begin to lose control of some uh, as many of these of my friends as possible perfect so when everyone goes crashing together what kind of move do you think josie makes just is it like a dip is it a duck what's it like uh it is it's it's a practiced it's a practiced thing. Um, she's, you know, this team, they, they, you know, rehearse over and over and over again to go into buildings and all of them be inside in an instant. And they're, they're literally, you know, shoulder to shoulder touching each other. And the witch imagines that bringing them together like that is going to put Josie off of her, kind of off of her move, but it has the exact opposite effect. She feels her brothers right there with her and... Uh, and so she doesn't really need to move at all. It's just this, uh, it's almost as if, uh, she's back in that moment and she's right where she belongs. And when you do that practice move out of the way, some of your compatriots actually, they link hands in a way that was not expected. And when the witch goes to like rip these ribbons back, you now have two people free yes. as that happens. Boom, 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 boom get names uh captain yeah. kendrick armstrong and master sergeant eric palmer have pulled free and they're actually like you know they're like this and they turn and they look at you and it's like before they were totally blank and they suddenly have a realization of where they are and what is happening and you hear mm -hmm. this like unearthly howl as this beast of a witch just throws her claws up in the air she is upset about this happening and she also seems to diminish slightly and with all that going on, let's go ahead and flip over to the van team. As she so, sees them come awake, as she sees them come awake, uh, just in a in a uh, kind of a bark of a voice almost, she just says out loud, target 12 o'clock, lead four meters. All right. 
right, nice. I, I gotta wait too soon. We gotta get that good stuff in. Okay, so in the van, which is sitting nicely on this like little hill that's formed itself, Lewis was flopped forward. Darcy's pushed him back in his seat. Um, let's go this way around. What's Cameron doing? You gotta unmute. I do it too. Yep. So I, I think Cameron is still like looking at her fists and like making X's again and seeing if she can like make more of this like glittering force come out, but it's it's not doing it this time. She kind of puts that aside. Um, and I think she starts to get out of the truck to see if there's anything she can do to try and help get it going again. Okay, you get out and you can see this big black scorch mark across the hood of the van. That doesn't look super good. Um, let's continue around our circle and talk about Darcy. Darcy, Lewis is unresponsive. Um, Darcy has taken the seatbelt off Lewis and is literally doing the check their breathing, check their heart rate. Like she's following through what she's been trained for other stuff um, to do, but she's just checking absolutely everything and sort of calling out to um, Cameron here and there. Um, just to be like, what, 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 what can you see? What, 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 what the hell was that? Um, uh, uh, fuck if I know. Some, I mean, someone said it was lightning, right? Uh, I, I don't know. It, it felt like it anyways. Darcy, you're getting no response. If Lewis is breathing, you're not really sure you're feeling it. If Lewis is heart beating, it's so so you're not feeling it. Uh, she, she's sort of now got like, hit, like she's trying to she's got like one of her um hands trying to um feel a heartbeat she's got like her hand under um his nose as well to see if she can pick up any she's like he's not breathing like at all the, but uh, how but like and she starts like dragging him out of the van <laughs> let's continue on and let's find out what sullivan's doing uh, if Darcy's pulling him out of the van, he'll get out of the van and help her. And as soon as they've got her laid down, he's going to try and use mental link on Lewis. Okay. So let's talk about this. Mental link, mental link, mental link. Do you want to read it out as we go? Uh, yeah. You want me to read it? Because I've got it right here. I think so. Yeah. You open a pathway to another creature's mind via a light touch, which allows you to transmit thoughts and images to each other. The mental link remains regardless of distance and lasts for one hour. In addition to the normal options for using effort, you can choose to use effort to extend the duration by one hour for each level of effort applied. It's an action. It's got a cost of one. Cool. I'm on board with this. Uh, it is outside of our typical way that we do things. I would like to offer you a GM intrusion. I'm typically doing this through the horror threshold right now. So here's how this works. If you say yes, you get an experience point for you and you get an experience point you can give to another player. You can hear the whole thing before you decide if you want to say yes or no. If your mental link succeeds, you're going to get sucked into the dream world. There's no reason you have to say yes. Oh, if you don't say yes, you do have to give me an experience point. Right, that's, that is how that works. Um, yeah, and then I'll use it to power up the witches. Witch. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do it, totally. Well, I mean, everybody knows that's the right answer. Thank you for playing along. So who would you like to give an experience point to? You know, I'll give it to Lewis. Sammy, I know you're in chat. You got to handle that yourself. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so, well, now you got that. <laughs> now you just seem greedy because he just said that, but okay. All right. So we are at this point. Um, Sullivan, you have to touch Lewis to do this. So that means you had to climb back. How'd that look? Well, because uh, Darcy was pulling him out of the van. So Sullivan got out of the van and helped her and now they're crouched down and I, I would assume he's like by Lewis's head and like touches Lewis's head. You do that. And Darcy, as you are watching, Sullivan just goes limp and falls on the ground. 
and what? just down. <laughs> and far away in some distant space, Lewis is bound tight with these red ribbons. You you see like the flash of a gum barrel go tracking across your face as Josie wheels to point it at the witch. And now you are also here. You are not bound. Josie, what's going on? Where Where is Sully relative to the witch and to me? Between you and the witch to make things more interesting. Thank you for that, yeah. Yes. Um, I just, Josie just yells, uh, Sully, get down. That sounds like a, that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to have Josie take a shot at this point then? Uh, not if there's a risk of hitting Sully, she won't. If you roll a one or a two, you will hit Sullivan. Uh, oh, okay. Um, then, uh, yes. Yes, I do. Good stuff. Okay, here comes. Uh, no one breathe. We don't want to shake the table or anything. Seriously. Ooh, oh, look at that. How about an 18? Okay, good stuff. Extra damage as this happens. Is Josie just way more focused? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, she is. She's in the zone. Okay, so you shoot. It's a perfect shot. It goes barreling right at the witch. You see it break against the bridge of her nose. And it obviously hurts because that dimple, that divot that you created before, it's getting bigger. And this is like, it's more like watching someone crack porcelain. It's just, mm. it's breaking and there's cracks and they're kind of like branching up her face. And as all mm. that goes on, Sullivan, you get to take an action. Uh... I want to try and hit her with the water blast from the sword because I'm assuming much like Josie realizing she has her weapons, I would have the same thing. Yeah. You know, the really cool thing is when you feel the sword in your hand, it is definitely your sword. It was always your sword. It's like, this is not a, um, a different thing. This is your sword. Okay. So they're like, it's like, it's my sword because I bought it, but you, it's like actually his sword because... It's not like you thought really hard and you conjured a sword in the dream world. This is your sword. Okay. So let's uh, roll. How do I do that again? Well, the good news is the sword is level eight and the witch is level four. So the sword is about to lay the smack down really hard on the switch. Um, I really just need you to roll a d20 and see if you deplete it. This does not affect the horror count at all. All right. And I can't, I just have to roll that straight, don't I? Yep. There's probably a button on the sheet, but I don't know what it is. Nice, okay. So let's talk about what just happened. You you are not 100% effective. You didn't solve the everything, but it's gonna be bad for the witch. So what did you do? Um, is the witch, the, the witch is like up a little from what I understand. She was, she was big, but I'm, a, I'm assuming like, cause it's a dream space. She's probably not at ground level. Right. Imagine seeing someone's shadow projected back on a wall, and you know how it does that thing where it just kind of grows and reaches up ahead? Yeah, it's yeah. like that. Nice. So I think he feels the sword in his hand, and he, with his other hand, spins it slightly and does an upward slash that sends the water's wrath uh, blasting up at her. Awesome. So the witch is showered in water. She's just like splashed back by this wave. You can see some of those red strings are snapping off of her fingers. Uh, behind you, Josie, we now have Josh Collins, Cam Jones. Your team is free, which leaves just Lewis still bound. As she starts falling back, the string pulls one more time and Lewis is actually like kind of bouncing towards her as this happens. So let's end this on a dramatic note. Um, Josie, if you can make a speed test roll, right here, um, or if you want to make it a might, no, let's make it a speed test. You can break this ribbon before Lewis gets bounced away into the darkness. I think you did a I, I will use uh, an auto success Oh, that's for my Lewis. That's, 
that's what you use it for. Now, Sammy stepped away. So later on, we're gonna have to tell Sammy how much everybody loves her and why we did this. Um, the ribbon snaps as that bullet shatters it. Lewis falls to the ground, kind of tumbles. Oh, I was wrong. Lewis, uh, Sammy's there, we're good. So everybody is free. Everybody is broken out of these ribbons. Lewis is laying on the ground. Your team is standing behind you. The witch, you just see this powerful wave just continue off into the distance, and the witch is not there anymore. It's just the two of you. Mm. And all of your team. Yeah. And Lewis. <laughs> There's a lot of people there. Uh, the, the rest of them are, are conscious, whatever that means in this space. Your team seems to be conscious um and yeah they seem to be aware um josie uh pulls the handgun away from that uh sort of aimed position and she's before doing anything else is just scanning where the horizon would be around us uh, to make sure that we're secure before she does anything else. Okay. As you scan and everything, you take a look. Your team's there. Lewis is there. Lewis is laying flat on the ground, face down, kind of like this. Your team <laughs> is all standing up. Cameron is still holding uh, Josie. Everything else seems normal. No sign of the witch. Sully, take a look at Lewis, would you? Yeah, sure. What, what's going on? Are we in a dream or something? I don't know, but I think we're safe. And, and as she says this, she's already sort of turning to walk back toward uh, her team. Okay. So, Sullivan, make a perception test. It's intellect. If you have the skill, you can use that. I and, do. Wait, perfect. So the difficulty was two. So for you, it's going to be a one. Awesome. Got another 18. You noticed it. Yeah, you noticed it immediately. You have that mental link with Lewis. So you know where what Lewis would be thinking about if he was thinking about anything right now, but he's not. The problem with Lewis, that candle's gone. It may have been washed away on that wave you just cast, but he's not holding it anymore. I'm sure that's totally fine. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. I mean, it probably is since he's not moving in any way, has no signs of awareness. So. Uh, I think in actuality, Sullivan's like, shit, where'd that go? Fuck. So that's going on. And Scrat, if you can hear this, uh, Mackenzie's complaining we still can't see the rolls move down in the screen. I think the roll window needs to be refreshed or something like that. Um, so Josie, your team is there. Uh, Josie walks toward them and we're all kind of fairly close together. I, I don't know how much time we have and she's focusing on uh, Captain Armstrong, who's the uh, a tall, uh, thin, black man. Uh, he's got a neck like a tree trunk and um, uh, and uh, captain's bars on his uh, on his uniform. I'm God. I'm so glad to see all of you, Conrad. I don't know what you did, but you did something. He's starting to glow gently. It looks like there's like a dissipating effect going on. I, I, I don't know either. And as I see this happening, Josie doesn't panic, right? Um, but as I see this happening, I, I start, it, she starts to a little bit and she's kind of moving back and forth from one to the other. I, I, I'm sorry it took so long. I, I think it's going to be okay now. And she's trying to touch each one of them, but she very quickly turns to uh to cam jones who's um mm -hmm. shorter he's the shortest guy there um 
and he's got a sort of a big radio pack on his back and there's an antenna and uh and he was the one who was holding her presumably her soul and she just runs up to him and 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 stops and there's this moment when they're just kind of looking at each other, looking at each other in the eyes and, and hesitating for a second. And then she just throws herself at him and and wraps her arms around him and and they kiss. Yeah. And the weirdest part is Cam was holding you a second ago. And we get that excellent shot where we get like two overlapping figures that step into one another. And at the same time that you get this very nice kiss, there's also this feeling of warmth flooding through your body that reaches all the way down to the tips of your fingertips and your toes. And you are alive in a way that you thought you had lost. You know, people called it PTSD. They said that you needed therapy. They said a lot of things, but there was always a missing part. And it's not there anymore in so many ways. And... In between, Cam says, I'm sorry. No, no, you, you saved me. I, I made it out. I, I made it back. I, uh, uh, you saved me. Behind you, the rest of your team, Sullivan, can see they're rapidly illuminating and kind of like dissipating, floating up into the air. Cameron or Cam's doing it as well right now. Um, everything's just kind of getting like more diffused, lighter, brighter. And he just says, Thank you. I'll I'll see you on the other side. And he puts his hand on your cheek, and you can feel just for a moment before it does that thing where it starts to diffuse and Camp's just floating light. And Josie puts her hand over his and and just holds it there for as long as she can. And and long after he's faded away, she can still feel uh, his touch. And she just holds it there for a moment. And she takes a deep breath. She turns around and and is all business. Um, she's pulled the slide back on the Glock and pulls the magazine out to check how many rounds there are, puts it back into its holster and back to Sully then. How's he? Uh, other than he's definitely like he's turned slightly and he's taken his glasses off and he's kind of like mm, everything's fine here yep mm, totally why why didn't he wake up I'm not 100% sure but there was a candle and before whatever brought him here did its thing it said something about putting the fire out Josie begins to pace just a little bit, just a really tight little circle, kind of back and forth, up and down the length of Lewis's prone body. <sighs> Gotta find Sophia. She kind Gotta of find Sophia. fades into existence next to you, but she seems very diminished compared to where she was before. If there's like a light scale, she's now like on a five instead of a 10 brightness right now. And she's looking at you and she says, Okay, um, really good. Things are moving fast. What's going on with your friend? He was pulled in somehow, and Sully, you said it was a candle? Yeah, and then he, like, he'd explain oh. exactly what went down for the group of them in the van. And does Sully know who Sophia is? Yes, because we talked um, to her okay. in your body. Okay, good. That's right. So you haven't seen her face, but you're picking up the context clues here real fast, I'm sure. 
Yeah. Um, the the vocal stops. The body positioning looks right. So, um, okay. Let me take him with me. I've got to get out of here, and you both definitely need to get out of here. But um, I'll watch him. Where will we find him? What do, do we need to do something? I honestly don't know what either of you is going to do. If you get a chance to stop that witch, stop that witch. We will. We will. All right, Sully, let's go. How? Right. Yeah, except I don't quite. Sophia, how do we get back? I can do it if you need me to. Can is can we do it? Can so I do you it? Know how to do it? Um, I don't know. Can you? I. 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 I don't think so. Okay, let me just do it for now. Ready? And she puts her hand on your chest and on Selvin's chest and just kind of like pushes you back. Ooh, I love it. And imagine this visual of you like falling backwards and when you flip back up, what's Darcy doing right now in the van? Uh, she was just outside the van and she's got like, but she, he's got Lewis in one of her arms and she's got Sully in the other, just like, help! <laughs> just screaming like, what is wrong with you? And she's just now shaking both of them probably too much. Uh, is Darcy angry or is she more just like shocked and surprised? No, she is surprised? terrified because like Lewis isn't breathing and that's what's okay. freaking her out. So I, Cameron is, I got to do a little bit. I have, to, I have to add, Pockets is just, not that anyone can understand him, but he's probably just yelling, dad, dad, dad. Dad, dad, over and over again. And, and Darcy's like, going, I know, I know, not knowing what he's going to say, but still trying to, I'm trying. That's worth it. Um, so Cameron, you're seeing all of this at whatever point you're taking this in. Um, Darcy is a lot bigger than she was a second ago. She's carrying two full-grown adults. Um, she is about six inches taller than you right now, and she's been working out suddenly um so all this is going on but also you're here and you're seeing all this what are you doing i think cameron was still inspecting the car and because she wasn't quite registering the situation with lewis but then the moment like sully's body also i guess slips out of the car she like jets over to try and like help him fall to the ground gently and then i think this is when she realizes like oh uh you don't need my help with this, do you? Uh, and she realizes she's looking up at Darcy instead of down at Darcy. Um, did you like, uh, God, did you get in like a, like a real good workout last night? Like or? Completely blind, she's like, Lois isn't breathing. <laughs> oh, okay, shit. But yeah, we're gonna talk about your thing where you got real tall in a little bit. Okay, um, I, I think, um, Lewis tried to do the recovery position on the, the woman uh, outside of the, the, the antique shop. Maybe we should, I don't know, lay him down so they don't throw up on themselves. I, I don't know what else to do though. Well, I, I, I tried that and that just, and she just sort of almost with one hand each turns them both over, puts them on the ground and tries to put them both in the recovery position as she's been told. It is a full blown panic. Cameron looks like ultra impressed, like, holy shit, that's awesome. <laughs> and like admiring how like jacked you are, I guess. <laughs> and Sullivan, you like, you feel your mind roll over and you're looking up from the forest floor. And Josie, you're in the back of a van. Josie, you know, I put the image is, you know, as she's falling back from that push, she could kind of see her fade and fall back into her body in the back of the van. And as soon as she hits, she's back up and kind of gasps in breath. And she's kind of stumbling around really quickly, trying to get up and, uh, uh, you, you know, you see her hands go up, but there's nothing in her hands um, because it's not there in the way that it was a few moments ago. I'm the only one in the van, right? You're the only one in the van. 
<laughs> did you, did, it, did the door I close? I would imagine the sliding doors open though. I don't think anyone would have closed it. No, I literally I just seriously? dragged out. So I wouldn't okay. lose anything. <laughs> the van electrics are not working either. So you don't have that on your side. So That's yeah. right, right. Um, and it's still not that light either at shortly after five o'clock in the morning or six in the morning. Yeah, in the Redwoods, it'll be like nine before it's really bright. Yeah, so I think um, I think if you're you're the if the shot is outside the van, uh, you just at some point see Josie kind of come flopping out, um, and it is the most ungracious uh, and ungainly thing, and um, it's the exact opposite of everything you've come to expect uh, from her. But she's kind of winds up on her knees for a second in the pine needles, and she's up and brushing off and looking around to see if she can see everybody. So this is all now going on and you're all in this space. I think contrary to Josie, Sullivan just wakes up like he was asleep and he just, he realizes he's laying outside in the grass and he's starting to put two and two together about what happened. And he just digs his hands and feet into the grass and lays there. But his eyes are open, and he's obviously, like, if Darcy's looking at him, he's awake and paying attention. Yeah, she's sort of, like, she's grabbed, like, you're almost, like, a couple of inches off of the ground, because she's, I mean, she's like, ah, oh, okay, this one's awake, and then drops you and then goes back over to Lewis and starts trying to do something with Lewis. Okay. Are you, basically we know for course of this game, uh, Lewis is not gonna wake up. So I would say at this point, you've exhausted your options that you're really familiar with. Oh, okay, she sort of sits back and is just like, is he dead? Uh, no, no, he's not dead. He's, he's with, um, he, he's not breathing. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. he's with Agatha's mom. It's Sophia. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's going to be fine. Uh, I, at least I think there's not really anything we can do other than find this witch. Is that what? Is that why we're in? Where are we? We're, like, I forget what the name away. of the place we're going to is. You're in the Henry Cowell Redwood State Park. The Redwoods part is pretty obvious, at least. There's a yeah. few Redwood forests in California, though. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a witch? Wait, 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 the, the, the assignment was Bigfoot. Wait. Sorry. And this happened, and then you happened, and then and she's just sort of sat back on like her heels, like, Oh. And then the lightning happened, and then Sully, I don't know what happened to you, but that happened. Is Darcy getting smaller? She's probably gradually getting a little bit smaller. More you can probably tell from the fact her jumper's getting bigger again. <laughs> I think I think at all that, Sullivan like sits himself up, and then if Darcy's right there, he'll put his arms around her protectively to help try and calm her down. She's just like got that, you know, that pat on the shoulder when you're looking past someone. But that pat of... So are we finding a witch or Bigfoot? And I turn on my heel to, and, and just to face where Cameron's standing. Cam, I thought she said Bigfoot a moment ago. Um, I, oh God, okay. It's, you've missed a lot. Uh... We're here to take a picture of Bigfoot. It's kind of like the werewolf gig, except we had to come into the woods for it. There's also a guy with a gun running around the woods, also looking for Bigfoot. So that's something to, you know, keep top of mind. But we figured you'd be, you know, you'd keep us all safe once you woke up. Hmm. <sighs> okay, we're going to have to talk about that when we get back. But Bigfoot, guy with gun, witch. Sully, she said the witch, right? Yeah. 
So what we were told basically is there's a coven of witches who tried to summon a demon and failed. They're now under the binding of said demon. They want spells that uh, are in horoscopes in a book and they're going to fight us because we're in the way. Hmm. Sounds then maybe like the whole witch thing is going to take care of itself. We don't need to find them. They're going to find us. Uh, based on what just went down, yeah. Totally. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay, that's a strategy. Go yeah, ahead. Do we, do we like think they're close by? Or maybe they tapped into the radio to cast the spell long range? Do we need... I don't know. I, are we going to be safe anywhere from these witches? No, probably not. At work, maybe. Mm, good the point. Words, but otherwise, I don't know. Uh, there are distant headlights driving in your direction on Highway 17. Uh, we probably like don't want to... rumble. We probably don't want to have to explain what's going on here. Yes, that is a good point. Let's get Lewis back in the van, maybe. Yeah, we could yep. we could um, put him in the back, kind of where where we had you. And I think mm -hmm. you'd see that maybe the group like stole a futon mattress from Horoscopes when no one in charge was looking, and like taco shaped it into the back of the truck so it was comfy for Josie. That's perfection. And um, presumably my boots also are somewhere in the van because, and you look down and of course you'd taken her boots off while she was sleeping. So just kind of in bare feet on pine needles and grass here. I didn't remember to grab boots, but then again, I didn't pack anything other than my flip flops this time. You didn't pack anything to eat? Oh, no, I brought food. I meant, like, footwear. I only thank, went with... Thank God, I am starving. I think Darcy's gonna, like, push, like, just sort of withdraw from Sully briefly and then just pick up Lewis and walk over <laughs> and just put him in the taco. <laughs> uh, and at this, Cameron, like, points at Josie and says... Uh, you know, you you had like a a purse and some other stuff in a in like a you know right next to you. Yeah. Uh, where you were sleeping, so we just kind of brought all of that. Cool, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, let's let's get out of sight. At least get in the van or something. Josie hops into the passenger seat rummages around for that backpack with her stuff. Sullivan will probably pop the hood on the van because it's, as far as he's aware, probably not going to start. Yeah, um, so you're in the front, stretching all the way to the back. It's proven to be a lot. And then additionally, yes, you pop the hood and there's just like this big scorched mark across the entirety of the engine and it smells like burnt oil. the distant headlights that have now gotten quite a bit closer as they're driving up. You can see it seems to be like a flatbed truck with a tow. It's a tow truck. And they're heading in your direction. Well, that's convenient as long as I don't find Lewis. Yeah. And as they get closer and closer to the van, they just stop on the side. There's a lady. She's kind of like bigger, heavier set. Um, get me da, 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 done. Come on. Let's pull up our description here. I want to say so as soon as, got... as sorry, as no, soon no. as he as soon as he realizes it's a tow truck, he like closes the hood slightly and just taps hard enough to get Josie's attention because she was in the front passenger and he like mouths tow truck at her. 
Josie's probably looking at the tow truck. Um, okay, so this lady has dark skin, braided black hair pulled back behind her. She's wearing like a hat, like a uniform hat. So the braid's just right there behind her. She has a really long scar that goes down her neck and down her shoulder like this. It looks like a burn. And she's wearing underneath her safety vest, a flannel shirt and a pair of like thick canvas pants. Um, she's walking up to you, Sullivan. She says, look, you look like you need a tow. Yep. My shop's out in Fulton, Felton. You want to go that way with me? I, sure. That's, I mean. She looks down at the front of the van. Is this a rental? Yes. Do you have to call people and stuff like that? Or can I just give you a tow and just charge you? You can just charge us. All right, here, um, let me pull around. How did you get this thing up on the sill? Uh, we got struck by lightning and it knocked us off the road onto this hill. All right, um, let me get things hooked up. There's a period of time where she like turns the truck around, backs it up, hooks up all the chains. Um, she comes back and tells you she's going to have to like yank it forward because of the fact it's on the hill and then get it properly set up. So is anybody getting out of the van or are you all just staying seated in the van? What's your thought? I'm going to assume by that silence, everyone is staying seated in the van. So without going I mean, into more excruciating details. I wasn't in the van, so I don't get in the van to, well, till it, Perfect. you know. Yeah, you can just get in the front when you get in the actual truck when that happens. So with that, she gets the front of the van pulled up onto the tow truck and starts driving you towards Felton, which is where you're going anyways. Um, she, like, motions to you to sit in the truck. I do that. Starts driving. The radio is playing country music. It's like old-fashioned country music. You know, something's a little bit like a Merle Haggard or something like that that's been around for a bit. And she's going very slow down the road. Not looking around or anything like that, just Eyes forward. Where is Pockets right now? <laughs> I just I just thought about that. Um honestly, I I mean he he might be with Lewis, but he also might have just decided he needs to stay with dad. So I'll flip the coin and see what it says. He's with Lewis. All right, so that's good. That makes your life slightly better. So with that, you get driven all the way into town. Any talking we want to do as you head towards Felton? It's about a five minute drive. It's real good. lucky that you were driving by, I guess. Well, it's the day before 4th of July and out here in the forest, there's usually at least one person whose car breaks down or they get drunk and they hit something. A lot of accidents on 17. How many cars you towed that get hit by lightning? Well, your car got hit by lightning? Yeah. This is probably the first. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so with that, she pulls her truck up. There's like a gas station. It's uh, like a old, like off-brand station. It says like quick gas. Uh, the gas prices do not look like they're great prices, but she pulls up and drops the van there. Next door to the gas station, there is a small, it looks like it used to be a Denny's based on the color and everything like that, but it's not anymore. Uh, now it's going to be called Phil's. And beyond that is a building that you've seen the front of from your website searches. That is the Bigfoot Discovery Museum. It looks like a house. Looks like we made it. Maybe we can like call a mechanic or something to work on the truck while we go in the museum and uh, talk to that guy we were supposed to. Maybe, maybe we already found a mechanic. I wonder if Sully's friend can take a look. I can ask, I guess. 
So are we all getting out of the van at this point? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay, and she's got like a big slip and it's in triplicate and you got to sign it and everything like that, Sullivan. So are you doing all that? Yeah. Okay, and the toe's 100 bucks. How do you want to pay for that? He'll just he'll open his wallet and be like, mm, I've only got 50 on me. Anyone got the rest? If I If I hear that, I would, um, oh, hold on, I've got that. And I go back to the front seat and I'm rummaging around in my backpack, um, <laughs> trying to be chill with that massive pile of cash that Bill gave me. Yeah, he um, has like 4,000 plus dollars just sitting in the bank. In cash. Um, are, there, are there small denominations at all or is it like $4,100 <laughs> bills? Uh, I think it's it's best if they're large bricks of twenty dollar bills that are like okay. you know crisp and stuck together slightly. Yeah, yeah. I'll um uh, uh, pull out a hundred dollars from that uh, pile of crisp uh, twenty dollar bills and walk it over. Uh, it, oh, and I'll actually grab another twenty. Um, really appreciate your help. Uh, so here's a hundred and a little extra. Yeah, thanks. Um, what's your plan? Are you guys going somewhere? Do you need a ride or anything like that? Um, and she looks back at uh, Cameron and Darcy. I still, you know, she's got this look in her eyes like, I still have no idea what's going on. Help me out here. And Darcy just points towards the museum. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were planning on taking a look in the museum. Uh, we're kind of like tourists, I guess. Is there any chance you can do more than tow it? Maybe get it working again? We'd love to, you know, keep going with our little trip after we go to the museum. You can say, yeah, I could take a look. I mean, you know, I've got the garage right here. I usually just do tows because, you know, it's good money, but yeah, I can take a look. If it's really been hit by lightning, that's going to suck. But it'll make a good story. How many of your coworkers dealt with a lightning ban? I, I don't have coworkers, but in general, I mean, it's going to it's going to be expensive. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. You're probably going to want to talk to your insurance people and talk to the rental company and stuff. They're not going to, this is not going to be good on the rental. Yeah, I know you're right. Um, well, if you could just maybe you could just give it a look and see what it would take. We're probably going to need an estimate or something anyway. So, yeah. All right, I'll take a look. Um, by the way, everybody who wants to do a perception roll, go ahead and make a perception roll. The difficulty here is only two. Um, I'm not planning on doing anything bad to you if you guys roll low numbers. It's just a general perception roll. Seventeen. Looking good. Looking good. Probably being very daft. Where is perception? Nice. Okay, yeah, um, I was just. If you don't have it as a skill, it's just going to be a general intellect roll. There's no yeah, okay. assigned skills at this point. It's not dangerous in case Josie's wondering. Okay. I don't think any of your stuff is going to apply to this one um, in yeah, particular, think, Allison. Yeah, I got it. I got up 16. Okay, good, good, good. And how'd Darcy do? Nice. Uh, Everybody got it. The most prominent feature on this tow truck is the sticker on the back in the corner rear windshield where Sullivan was sitting before that matches the sign of the Bigfoot Discovery Museum, which is two buildings down from where you are right now. So she's got a Bigfoot sticker. That's all. At this, Cameron will kind of jump in and say, oh, man, you know, I mean, anything you might be able to do to help the truck would be great. We really... Uh, we really just want to get to the museum and learn all about squatches or Bigfoots or, you know, yeah. that's why we're here. Yeah, they're not going to be open until like 10. You got hours. Oh. Uh, anything we should check out in the area while we wait? I mean, Phil Steiner's okay if you're hungry. Otherwise, um, not much. You can go take a Redwood hike if you want to. Damn it! As soon as she said Phil's diner, uh, um, uh, Josie's like, 
And question answered. Oh, hey, uh, but sorry, what was your name? Me, I'm Cassie. Cassie, uh, it's really great to meet you, Josie. Um, so our friend is kind of, he's sleeping on the mattress in the back. He's just, uh, we had we had quite a night last night up in uh, San Jose uh, with some friends of ours. Do you think it'd be cool just to let him sleep back there? I mean, he's not going to wake up. It doesn't bother me any. It's not the first time I've seen that. Cool. Really appreciate it. Um, and we'll just go down to, uh, we'll just go down to Phil's. So you all go rolling into Phil's. So the popular I, mean, I, I just love yeah. that you didn't make me roll anything for that. <laughs> About leaving Lewis in the, the truck. It's like, honestly, I don't really want us to have to do the weekend of Bernie's for the entire episode where you're like constantly picking up Lewis. I'm okay with that just staying where it is. Sweet. Okay. So we're going so, to Phil's. Yeah. So you guys go to Phil's. So there's like four cars out front despite the hour. And Phil's is a former Denny's in terms of like the color and like the sign is the same shape and everything like that. So you got the shape of a Denny's sign, but then somebody has placed a much smaller sign on it that says Phil's in a very different like impact font. So when you walk inside, like the nice white formica tables with a little metal edge. It's got the red booth seating. Everything looks clean and it actually smells really good in here. It has that smell of frying hash browns as you're walking in the door, a little bit of bacon smell. And it's like 6 a.m. Everybody who is in here looks like they are a lumberjack or like aspiring to be a lumberjack. There's like four guys all at the counter back to you, flannel shirts, trucker hats, um, all the, the cars out front are all four wheel drive vehicles. There's a Subaru out back and then like three um, trucks. So Phil is behind the counter as best you can tell from the name tag that says Phil. He's like maybe mid thirties, pretty slender guy, dark skin, black hair, like really slicked back. Like he looks like he's in like an episode of Happy Days. And he's got a very bright white smile. And as he comes up to all of you, he says, hey, you guys can just sit wherever you want. Any table's good. And there's like a little circle booth and there, there's some standard booth seating. Oh, we definitely, Sullivan heads to that circle booth, of course. Okay, so you guys can spread out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's that awkward shuffle, you know, when you sit on the machine, the awkward shuffle all the way around. Uh. Yeah, who's who's sitting by who? I guess if I was the first to sit down, I'm probably in the middle. Like I went all the way to the other side. Darcy would sit probably second because she knows by sitting down she gets food faster. Cameron's probably on an edge. Uh if if that's the case, then Josie's been who's been waiting to sit down will come over to where Cameron's sitting and be like, "Yeah, could you shove in? I'm gonna just sit right here." <laughs> okay, so I have cool. to again ask the magic question of the day: Where is Pockets right now? <laughs> I think we haven't realized it yet, but Pockets is probably with us. I think that sounds good. So Phil walks over to you. He's got four menus and he just like tosses them down on the table real fast. He says, okay, I can do whatever. You guys aren't from around here, right? No. Okay, if you want something that's not on the menu, let me know. I can do stuff that's not on the menu too. Like, uh, you know, just let me know. But um, you guys, do you want coffee? Do you want tea? Yes. An espresso machine? Just coffee, Phil. Okay. Um, uh, coffee. Do you do milkshakes? Yeah. Yeah, of course I can do a milkshake. Yeah, I really like a milkshake. Milkshake, what kind? Chocolate, vanilla? Chocolate. I think I could do strawberry. Okay. How about you? Coffee? Yeah. Just bring yeah. a big pot. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I'll do coffee and a milkshake. Coffee and a milkshake. All right. So he leaves, comes back. He like pours out mugs of coffee, just leaves the urn right there on the table. And then you hear the milkshake machine going in the background. 
couple of the folks who are sitting at the diner to like look at you guys as you get your milkshakes. Mm. Is it over towards us? And it's like that diner milkshake where you get the big can too. Nice. Josie looks at the menu for literally two seconds and then puts it down um, and looks to Darcy as she starts to sip her milkshake. Uh, so milkshakes, that's, that's how you get all buff like that. Must be like milkshakes for breakfast. Um, you know, calcium, good for your bones, you know, just, yeah. Um, I thought the really awkward shrug of, oh, they've noticed, even though it's obvious. It's, yeah, yeah, no, I, I drink a lot of milkshakes. Um, sometimes I have uh, protein shakes, um, but, um, you know, I like to have a big breakfast. Um, you know, because you never know. I, I I have to walk everywhere. I have to walk everywhere because I don't have a car. Mm -hmm. Cameron's like nodding along, but it, and is like enjoying the farce, and then looks like leans forward really intently while like swirling some coffee on the table and goes, "So like, is that a new thing you do, or have you always been able to do that? I mean, I found out about mine li uh, less than twelve hours ago. Wait." 24 hours ago. Um, so I'm still kind of figuring it out. Like, and do you just get big and, and like ultra ripped or do you do other stuff too? And it's the sort of the, the look down, it's like you hear that, that, that sound of a straw as they sort of draw the milkshake up. Is that, um, <clears throat> um, I mean, you know, I'm, a growing girl, um, I, I can still, mm-hmm, like, <laughs> it's just the real thing. So, your thing, what was that in the back of the van? I, I told you, I, like, thought about, like, shooting energy over the truck and then, like, glitter shot out of my body. So yeah, that's yeah, my thing. What, what is that? keep being told I'm a witch um like I said had magic lessons with my aunt in a dream but that's kind of all I got who taught so, you how to get all big and ripped about this time Phil is walking up I don't know if you guys are ready for that but he's got the order pad he's like okay what do you guys want there's like typical diner food and then there's also some like interesting stuff on here like a salong and a longuisa and so forth so it's like garlic fried rice with egg and uh some sausage on the side Phil, uh, waffles. Me two waffles, um, a couple of sausage patties, and uh, and uh, egg over easy. Just kind of just put it right on top, and then do you have sausage gravy? Um, yeah, yeah, like a white gravy. Yeah. Yeah, just throw like a ladle of sausage gravy over that, would you? Can do. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Do you have like um, um, a big breakfast? You know the ones where it kind of has everything on it. Wait, wait. What do you what do you want again? Like a breakfast, like a big breakfast, like you know, like sausages, bacon, eggs, toast, beans, mushrooms, tomato. Don't 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 you do that? Uh, I could do like a like a big salon if you want with like some fried rice and some eggs and some sausage on it, or I could do you like a whole bunch of pancakes and some sausage and bacon. Oh my gosh, pancakes! And I have pancakes, please. It's just yeah, like yeah, I can do that. The milkshake over again. Yep. Okay. How about you? Uh, I'll take uh, double hash browns and one pancake and one waffle, and then oh gosh. Um, I think we should order something for Lewis. Uh, what do you think he'd like? Maybe the, um, maybe like the, the diner sampler meal where you get like two pancakes, two waffles, two bacon, like two of everything. That that one, right? And we can box it up and hopefully Lewis wakes up in time to, well, it's still good. We have a tired friend. Um, that's all you need yeah. to know. 
it's like 6 a.m. I've seen this before. It's good. Um, okay, how about you? Yeah, I want uh, three eggs scrambled. I want double hash browns. I want as many sausage links as you'll give me, uh, a waffle, uh, and I need the blueberry sauce and the syrup. Okay, yeah, I can give you, like, we got a lot of sausage around here. It's no problem. Okay, I'll get all that going. Um, yeah. Okay. Walks off. Dun, 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 dun. Go, go back, back to, to drinking a milkshake and hoping yeah. no one's remembered the question. <laughs> oh, and, like, Cameron, like, leans in again. It's like, so are you super hungry because because of the thing you do where you get super big or I, I don't get I don't get I don't think I get super big just uh, you know I mean it's awesome I mean I wouldn't call it that but oh okay well then then what would you call it awkward okay it's nothing really. Like I'm sure loads of people do it. Nope. No. No, they they do not. They definitely do not, Darcy. It's fine. I mean, like I mean, it's only happened twice. It could be a new thing. Maybe it doesn't happen often. You know. I mean, what about all that cool stuff? You were pulling at the, the dock place we went you know at the club outside the club wait 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 wait. could could you do it right now like could you make it oh like oh, oh. could you like can you just do it when you want to do it um i just sort of looking around this this whole bar she's like no i don't think i i don't really try to do it i don't really no i i because you know you don't know what comes um next or with it or anything with it like you know so um, yeah <clears throat> you have to like be like i mean is it like a bruce bannon you gotta get like mad or or scared do you have to get scared i'm not good with emotions i'm a very sensitive person and sometimes they overload that good yeah. to Good to know. Just if you could read Josie's mind right now, you'd know that she was like, her her thinking was that as Darcy started talking, she'd like jump across the table and go, boo, really loud and scared <laughs> to see if, but as when she's, when the not really good with emotion, she's like, hmm, okay, not, not a good plan right now. I, it, it, it's, it's not something I'm proud of. Oh. Well, geez, why not? It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's super cool. No, no, yeah. no it's not. The, what, what, what this is is not amazing. I mean, uh, if, 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 if I could do that, you just never have to be afraid of anything again. You think? What? I mean, what makes it not amazing? What? Um, you know, this is like the first stage and I don't really like what comes after that. So I just leave it and I, it, it, it's not nice. Um, and it's terrifying. I'm terrifying. So as you're scared. all talking, Phil's coming over with four big plates. Um, you can smell everything. The sausage smells really spicy and is super red. Um, but anyway, so it's getting put out everywhere. You've got probably blueberry syrup and probably maple syrup and then some sort of purple syrup that's all going on the table and everything's out there. Okay, you guys need anything else? No? Okay, I'm, I'm just right over there if you guys need me. Man. It's amazing, Phil. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Like yep, things. yep. <laughs> well, Darcy, is there anything you can do about it then? 
I concentrate a lot. Well, I, I'm, I'm, and she like pauses, she's like almost clapping her hands, like tapping the cutlery on the table and just, I, um, I get nervous really quickly, um, b because I don't want to do it, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, um, I used to have a bit of a temper, um, growing up, like as a little kid, um, I, I don't now, it's, it's I don't know. I I know what it's like to feel like you're out of control or things happening to you without being able to control it. But all of that stuff about being terrible and and awkward and and awful. I don't know. That sounds. And she sort of literally leans her, her arms across the table towards you with like the knife and fork still in her hands. She's just like, Whoa, what kind of out of uh, control are you talking about? Like, um, how do you deal with it? I am. Um, and she's like leaning uh, <laughs> over. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I've just kind of gotten used to it. Um. But mine's easy to hide, though. <laughs> I mean, if I concentrate, and again, I just need to be in control, and then, you know, then mine's easy to deal with. Yeah. Well. You know, <laughs> um, because I don't, um, it, it, it's weird. It's like, a, and she starts like running her fingers across the, um, the edge of the table, and she's like, it, it's a, it's a, it's an out of control thing, but um, it starts with emotion. But you know, it's it's one of those things. It's quite adrenaline fueling. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get to that stage. Yeah. Um, well, Darcy, that's just human. You can't, you can't <laughs> shut that off. That's that's your survival instinct. It's there for a reason. Protects you. Um, this me staying calm. And she sort of like again quiets her voice a little bit, sort of like looking over at table. It's like protect you. Okay. I, I don't. I don't doubt it. I. I don't want to be like. Like my brothers or my family. <laughs> so it runs in the family? Kind of like witch I stuff mean, and werewolf powers? I guess you could say that, yeah. Um, hereditary, maybe, yeah. I didn't want it. I didn't want any anything like that i i literally i just want a job and i want to take photos i want to pay my own bills and i i don't want any of the other stuff that goes with it there's this long silence and in during which josie's shoving massive forkfuls of this terrible looking thing on her plate into her mouth um but then she turns uh to her right um wait and cam you said you just like you just found out you're a witch uh yeah like three days ago i was pretty sure everything that's happening base one day i don't there's a lot going on a short period of time ago i was pretty sure none of this was real like None of this. No wards, no werewolves, no whatever the hell all of us are, I guess. But uh, yeah, turns out I'm a witch. Um, I don't really know what that means yet. I think my aunt's going to give me magic lessons, but it's, I don't know, it's super new. I'm kind of excited by it. 
It's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you get a, did you get one of the hats, like the big pointy? Because those know, are so cool. You know, my aunt has one of those. I didn't. I don't know. I I know I got like I got something right, but I can really see it. I'll have to. I, I've got like these. I don't know. I've got like this armor suit that I can turn on. I, I don't know how to. I don't really know how to turn it on yet, but I will figure it out. And I'm gonna do it in a mirror. I'm gonna do that soon. I don't know, maybe Darcy, you can, I don't know, maybe there's like lessons you can take to learn to control it. Like, I don't know, maybe you're like uh, like Scarlet Witch or uh, or Phoenix or, or, you know, one of those superpowers where like they didn't know how to control their powers at first and then they were scared and then they figured it out and then were totally badass. It's like every comic. Darcy eats her pancakes. <laughs> Just that slow sort of cut into a pancake. Eat it. Food is being eaten. You hear the front door do like kind of a loud thump, like when someone kicks or pushes a door open as they're walking in. There's a man, he's, you know, about six foot, wearing a hunting vest, plaid shirt, jeans, like Wrangler jeans, uh, you know, hiking boots. He's got on a trucker's cap. He's looking himself in a GoPro as he talks, as he walks in the door. He's a blonde haired man with like longish in the back hair. And as he walks into the room, he says, today for sure, we're going to find ourselves a Bigfoot. And I tell you, we're not going to just go find it. We're going to... We're going to take care of that Bigfoot any day now. So first things first, we got to fuel up, carb up for a long day in the woods, and then we are sure to shoot ourselves a cryptid. And with that, he like turns around, like turns off the camera and says, Phil, I just want eggs and hash browns and none of that weird crap. Just eggs and hash browns. And he sits down and Phil like gives him a thumbs up and goes back to what he's doing. I already didn't like him from looking at him online, but I really don't like him now. As Sullivan leans over to be quiet to, and looks at Josie and is like, that's obviously the hunter hunting Bigfoot. He's the one was not call. subtle. Um, okay. Um, what... What kind of gun? Let's start there. The long kind? That I, you, you know, he does yeah. that thing where he's like, it's, oh, it's so slimy and gross. I don't remember Josie, but we can get on his YouTube and I'm sure you can figure it out from videos or maybe he's got it posted somewhere, but it's, it's either a rifle or a shotgun, I forget. Cool, cool, be good to know. And yeah. Cam, they call them long guns, actually. So you're spot on. Good job. Um, hmm. Is is he a threat or is he? I don't, he he seems determined. He seems um, foolhardy. I don't know. I watched. I don't even want to say how many hours of his videos I watched, but he wants to catch a Bigfoot. He seems a little kind of happy on the trigger. Um, so we yeah, definitely he's definitely trigger happy. Need to watch out. I don't know if he'd necessarily harm us, but or if we got in the way of him and what he was after, then yes, yeah, he becomes a threat at that point. What's his name? Cameron looks at a note on her phone. Yeah. She made a Google Doc full of like Bigfoot knowledge. Um, Hank Young. Here, I'll, um, I'll link you to the doc so you can get caught up. It's got like a bunch of research on it and links to some of his best videos. Perfect. Perfect. Um, can you just, can you, what's the one with the most hits? I just need to know, like, give me one quick fact. 
Cameron like highlights it in the doc so that Josie can see it and then kind of or like gives her her phone yeah. um, with the video up. Cool. Um, and I'm, all I'm really looking at is the title and the first few comments. I just want to know what this very popular video is basically about. Um, it is a video of him sitting by a fire that he has like like one of those little propane stoves and he's eating beans and hot dogs together as he talks about how today he's going to be out in the uh, Redwoods National Forest and he's going to shoot himself a Bigfoot. It's just a couple of days old and it has a lot of hits, like about 115,000. Okay. So I'm. it's amazing how quickly Josie has cleaned this plate of food, but it's basically gone. I think right, Sullivan's so. the same way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just kind of wiping. Um, and all right, so I've got a, I, I have a plan. Just, just hear me out with this, okay? Um, maybe uh, uh, Darcy. Y yeah. Why don't you? Um, I'm going to distract Mr. Hank Young. Uh, can you just, you want to just go out and just see what you can see in his truck? I'm, I just want to know what, his, what kind of gear he's got. Uh, you could take some pictures maybe so I could see him. Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you want me to swipe anything? Uh, I'm I, going I, I, I to I leave that up to. to your best judgment. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, <clears throat> I don't have to. Darcy, I trust your judgment implicitly. If oh. you see something there that seems like it would be useful to swipe, and I'm trying to do this kind of quietly, then by all means. So I'm allowed to do it. Yes, yes, you are. Okay. You okay. are, <laughs> yes, I, I am delegating that authority to you. I'm gonna get in trouble and she starts like excuse me like trying to because she's like in the middle of this circle table trying to like <laughs> shuffle down oh before you go does anybody and i'm kind of looking around at every anybody have any like lipstick something really anybody have anything like <laughs> no uh, yeah um okay all right <laughs> And she's um, taking her hair and kind of just throwing it into a quick braid. And uh, I'm going to say she's got on a, uh, 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 oh, like, like a plaid, like a, a, a plaid button down shirt or something. Maybe I'll throw on her just because it looked like it would keep her warm in the woods. And so, um, while Darcy's getting ready to go, I um, I unbutton that plaid shirt down right about to the middle of my chest, and I unbutton the bottom coat, the bottom tails, and tie them up in front of me, so my, uh, so my belly's showing a little, and I roll up my the cuffs of my jeans, and all right, Darcy oh, actually just sort of ah, and stomps out in her boots. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go talk to Hank. You are approaching Hank. Now, you guys have one big round booth on the exact opposite end of the restaurant. There is a booth that's intended for like five, six people, and Hank has taken it all by himself, where he's like sitting back like this, and he's looking at his camera as he's reviewing his footage that he just recorded and waiting for his food. He has the ketchup bottle in the center of the table. So... <sighs> Oh my God, Hank Young? Hank, it is uh, you, isn't it? Means. Yeah, his smile starts to sparkle and he pushes his hat back and he goes, yeah, that's right, Hank Young. And I'm gonna scoot right into that booth. I, I have seen all your videos. I've been watching, I've been watching your videos since the very beginning. Well, shoot. It's always good to see a fan. I, I am such a fan. I, that last video you posted, uh, where you're just sitting around the fire and I lean in a little, I got to tell you, that was, 
That was a really good video. But, you know, I just giving the people what they want. Lots of Hank, lots of, you know, the important stuff. When, when we actually catch ourselves, I should say, shoot ourselves at Bigfoot, that's going to be a big deal. It is. And I, I, I know you can do it. Is that, oh, that's why you're out here today, isn't it? That's right. You probably haven't seen a new video, but we're going to be, you know, out here. We're going to, we're going to find ourselves a Bigfoot and we're going to shoot it today. I feel good. It's a good day for that. You keep, you keep saying, we I always wondered, are you just doing it on your own or, or do you have like your team with you or something? I will tell you a social media secret. He says as he like leans forward across the table, if you're going to talk to your audience, you got to make them feel like they're connected. Um, you know, it's me and all my fans out there hunting Bigfoot. I, I knew it. I knew it was just you. I, I mean, Hank. I, can I call you Hank? Is that all right? Sure, sure. That's no problem. Oh, I'm I'm Stacy, by the way. And he he gives you like the big handshake. And there's a moment there where he he looks like he's gonna do the thing where he kisses the back of your hand, but then he doesn't do that. <laughs> I, I I just can't believe it. I I I just came down with my friends to go to the museum. I am so into Bigfoot. I don't know if you really want to waste your time with that. They don't really talk much about Bigfoot in there. It's just a bunch of that old videos and stuff like that. You can find that on the internet yourself. Oh, well, what about, what about the gift shop? Have they got a cool gift shop? Um, you know, I, I do all my own merchandise. I don't really look into what other people have out there. You know, all my stuff's original. I, you know, I was going to wear your t-shirt today. I can't believe I didn't wear it. But I thought it might be cool, so I just put on this flannel. Does, what do you, does this look all right to you? And she kind of leans in a little bit. Uh, what, are, what are we attempting here? <laughs> you know exactly what we're attempting here, Hans. <laughs> I, I know exactly what we're attempting here. So, uh, yeah, so if this was a cartoon, Hank's eyes would get really big. But since it's not a cartoon, Hank's eyes just get really big. And he's just paying attention to you. Yeah. And I am, I'm trying to, I've got two things in, in mind here. Number one, I am trying to distract him for Darcy or no, just two, just two Hans. Um, for, just trying to completely distract him. So Darcy and potentially anybody else can, uh, can kind of see what's going on with his stuff outside. Um, but also in the hopes of getting him to say something stupid or foolish or, or um, share a piece of information that helps us to know what he's doing or to keep track of him. Uh, let's make a roll against Hank in which we are trying to use one of your very good skills of detecting lies, I believe, or yeah, is it like hidden stuff? How's it going? Uh, it is, um, let me pull it up here. Uh, oh yeah, all interactions involving lies or trickery. Yeah, trained. So the one below that though, where you're trying to identify and assess like what he's really capable of. Oh uh, yeah, okay, like sure. That's really the one you're going for, right? But let's yeah. go ahead and make an intellect roll. Intellect for Hank is gonna be a difficulty three roll. Okay. How about a 19? Gonna, uh, that sounds like a good roll. So do you want to have this in some way be linked to you working the system? Um, oh, I suppose it could be. <sighs> uh, you tell me where we're putting the focus. We can have it be a works the system thing or we can have it be a ghost thing. Yeah, let's. I want it to be a works the system thing. So I'm just trying to okay. keep him talking, get him to reveal. This is, this is, it's social hacking, right? I'm trying to get him to yeah. reveal something like I would a password from someone or something like that. Got it. So while you were working on Hank, as that scene takes place, let's talk about outside for a little bit. So Darcy, there are now five cars parked out front, the four trucks and, uh, or I should say the three trucks in the outback that were originally there. And then now a very large truck that is raised. It is black. The headlights and taillights, all those things are black. It has the row of 
like search lights up on top. I don't know what those are called. And the lights that are out in front of the car as well. And it does have a gun rack on it, which does have a long rifle mounted on it. Yeah, I think she's just sort of smiles at people as she walks past if they look at her. Otherwise, she's just like strolling. It does that really awkward, just, you know, just stretching. <laughs> like, yeah. and this is a one street town, and the only people who are anywhere nearby that are not in this diner might be Cassie. Okay. Then she moves over towards where this truck is. I have a skill in breaking things. <laughs> You do. <laughs> please, whether can I first of all can I look in the window see if there's anything actually in the lights go up on the step because I'm currently quite short and just look in. Yeah, you totally would have to step up here either way because this truck is now about six and a half feet tall at the window. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are able to look in there and you see and there is a whole bunch of what looks like maybe it's video editing equipment and like Wi-Fi connection equipment and stuff like that that's in there like signal boosters. Mm -hmm. Huh. And sort of those shuffles round to see if there's um, any way into the truck <laughs> by breaking the Well, there's the, the lock, doors, possibly. there's the back window. Yeah, you could try any of that stuff. She'll try to break the lock, not like in an obvious way, but she's very good at breaking locks, as we saw in the ice cream van. So she wants to be able to break it enough to pry it open. Cool. Let's do that. So you're going to break things, which is a might roll. And the difficulty is three. Okay. Can I quick interject something? Because I had an idea too. Mm -hmm. So as we're eating and having this big discussion, Sullivan realizes he's got a stowaway and he gets Pockets to go with Darcy. And because he can actually talk to Pockets, he t tells Pockets to pull the dude's spark plugs out of the car. Hmm, okay. Do you want to make a roll on Pocket's behalf for this? Sure. I feel like this is an intellect roll. What is a spark plug? Uh, you know, I'm going to spend my auto success. <laughs> okay. Well, the good news is that, uh, you know, Pockets didn't decide to, like, pull out electrical cords or anything like that, so that's good. And then um, let's go on to Darcy. Darcy, how'd your roll go? Um, Darcy's going to use her auto success as well. She doesn't want to get draw attention to the rest of the cars. She just wants to get in and sort of climb up, you know, and it's that awkward push yourself up and slide into the truck because she's not very tall. And yep. she can't help herself. The first thing she's going to do is try to break the Wi-Fi because she doesn't like this guy. <laughs> okay. Have you made your roll? Did I miss it? It's just, no, it's just coming through. So. Okay. Looking pretty good. You have broken things. Okay, now... For the best part, as this lock gets broken and the door is about to open, do you want evens or odds? I'll say odds because I'm very good with that once. <laughs> so you just have to roll a d2 and mm -hmm. flip that coin, see what we get. There we Ooh, go. <laughs> good job. Well, you didn't break off the entire door or anything like that, so you, the door just disconnects and yeah, it's open now. Yeah, she, that's it. She sort of um, the other thing she goes in. She's looking for any information at all, like literally something that Cameron would want. She's looking for it. Well, he's got a big map that's marked up all over the place. He's got a whole bunch of these, like uh, video editing pieces of equipment. He's got, you know, like backup hard drives, uh, cell phone, like satellite antenna, that kind of stuff. Yeah, the first thing she does is take um, unfolds the map and takes a photo of it, and then refolds it back up and puts it. Okay. Back. Anything that she can sabotage slightly, not necessarily like so it looks like it's been. I don't want to go in and smash a phone. I don't want to go in and do um, that sort of thing. It's like if she can break like the top of the antenna or something that would just make it annoying and difficult. Yeah, you can like snap it while it's in its like little silicone sheath and then yeah, just put it back together just like that. Put it like that and then sort of. 
shuffle back out the car and close it yeah. quietly, but then she'll probably... Did I see any bullets or anything in the car? Yes, you did. There yeah, are I'm, I'm three or four them. very large <laughs> boxes of high-velocity ammunition in the back of the car. I'm taking all of them. Okay. Yeah, these are the kind of bullets people use to hunt bears and things like that. This is definitely not somebody who has, like, normal average ammunition. This is definitely a jerk with a gun. Yeah, no. I've got a big jumper. They are going up the jumper for a start. Mm -hmm. um, and she... Is there a drink in the front of the van at all? Like a bottle of water? Obviously. Like There's got to be... In, in the front of the van or in the front yeah. of this car? This of truck. the truck. Okay, yes, there has to be a drink. It is a monster energy drink. Okay, she's going to crawl up to the top of the roof and she's going to open the barrel and pour it down the barrel of the gun so that it absolutely drenches everything in there and can't fire. Okay, and you, you hear this like gluck, 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 <laughs> and after a little while there's like liquid running out of the chamber of the back of the gun. There's just like a little bit. Yep. Closes it again. It's sort of scrunches up the can and looks at it and then it goes to find the nearest trash can and puts it in. Is, mm -hmm. you yeah, know. there's a trash can over at Cassie's auto shop, so. Yeah, she sort of walks in and if she's got all the information that was there, she's just gonna throw it in the bin, stroll back into, um, she's, got, well, she's going to head over to the truck, um, not the truck, sorry, the van that we had, open it, check on Lewis, put all the bullets <laughs> somewhere safe so that they aren't on her when she goes back in to the diner, okay. closes the door and tries to casually stroll back into the diner. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think you have to roll for casual or anything like that. I think that nobody's paying attention to you because uh, Josie, who is Stacy right now, is that right? Stacy, is very engrossing. So realistically, <laughs> everything else is happening. Do, do I know that Pockets is there? Or has Pockets done this like <laughs> stealth <laughs> Yeah, I think he would have made sure that, like, it was, uh, like, po not to let Pockets get spotted, but that she would know so she wouldn't, like, be surprised, because that might be too obvious. I mean, Darcy feels very pleased with herself anyway, so she's actually probably walking a little bit taller, not quite as hunched over or anything, and she would probably look at Pockets and sort of pass with half with the like we did it buddy and this as you stroll, holds the door open for him as they go into the diner and then closes it behind them okay so you're back in the diner uh pretty much all the food at your table has disappeared and all the plates have been picked up at this point too so it's just down to like a couple milkshakes and a couple big cups of coffee hi like just sort of like excuse me shuffles in and slides back round to that <laughs> in the circular table. And so go. Says, I've got some stuff for you, but I'll show you later. <laughs> and she sort of like she's on her phone and she does ping a photo of the map across to the group so that um, Cameron can see it, but otherwise she just pulls her milkshake back over to where she is. And sort of probably if Pockets will allow her to give him like a little scritch on top of the head, almost just like, yeah, <laughs> sort of thing. Oh, yeah, he totally lets you do that. <laughs> and sits so, well, there Pockets actually just... looking very happy for once, just mm -hmm. breaking stuff. Worked. So, we've got this very good scene over here. And on the other end of the diner, Stacy has been working on uh, Hank Young and. I'm personally thinking right now this very good success is you get his phone for a bit while he goes to the bathroom. What do you think? I love it. Perfect. I absolutely love it. So he gets up, he's like, excuse me, darling, I got to take care of some business back there. I'll be back. All right. I'll be and right here. He up, yep. And he has left his phone just straight on the table. I, um, I pick it up and I pull out my own phone and set up, uh, I set up a, a Bluetooth connection between the two and I'm going to, um, I'm going to load a piece of, uh, a, 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 a piece of code onto his phone that allows me to, uh, uh, number one, to track it, but also 
to get in and control some key systems if I can. I'd like to be able to control uh, GPS uh, and I'd like to be able to control the signal strength of the transmitter in his phone. So you could do that. There's no reason not to do that, right? That sounds good. So yeah. his phone is now broken, so that's good. Cool. And I'll just sort of uh, wipe it off, break the connection, and put it back up. Just kind of wait for him to come back yep. out. So he does that and sits down and talks about himself at great length while eating eggs and hash browns with his mouth open and catch it poured all over the top of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I look over, I'm kind of just glancing over at my team to see, just to make eye contact with somebody to see if you're ready to, to go. Cameron's probably got the best vantage point. What does Cameron do? Cameron's eyes went wide when she saw the map pop into the chat. In the chat. So Cameron isn't paying attention at all. She's actually nose in her phone, like zooming in on this. And she like falls into that map. There's like three points that are immediately nearby. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So Cameron is not making any eye contact with you, which means next is probably Sullivan as Darcy is scratching pockets. Oh yeah, Sullivan. Sullivan just. Uh, I think he just does like this. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, well, um, we are Hank. Uh, my my friends are are calling. Um, I should probably go. It has been so. I can't believe I got to meet you today. This has been. This is the best day ever. Well, you know, it's going to be a pretty good day for me, too. I reckon we're going to catch a Bigfoot for sure today. So if you, um, you know, if you're around later tonight, probably be back here. And um, I've got a, I'm staying at a place down the street. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, well, I would, I would love, I'd love that. I'd love to, um, can I, can I give you my number? Sure. And he points his phone at you again. Yeah, so I just put my number in, and of course, my phone is set up so that it doesn't auto, it doesn't identify me as Josie when uh, when he calls. So I put my number in. Uh, actually, I put in a different number that I have set up that reroutes to my phone. How's that? Um, yep, sure. I I I hate to ask this. I wonder. Would it be okay if maybe my friends and I, we got a picture with you? Can we get somebody to take a picture? And before he even answers, I'm like, guys, come over, come over. And he goes, well, shoot, I usually charge $5, but come on in, come on in. Come over. You know who this is. <laughs> just like, oh. this, just is, this is Hank Young. This He's the Bigfoot hunter. What? No shit, Hank Young? Oh, yeah. that Hank, yeah. <laughs> With all the videos. Those videos are great. Oh, yeah. He's the he's that Bigfoot internet guy. Yeah. The beans, hey. yeah. Hey, he's we, can, gun. He said we could have a picture with him. Okay, everybody getting close. Come here, come here. There's room over here. Pat in the seat, looking at Cameron. There's room over here. All right. <laughs> like Darcy's looking at Cameron like off oh, to you. <laughs> Can we get we get Phil to take the picture? Yeah, Phil comes over, he looks disgusted with all of you, takes the picture. Okay. As good. he does, I'm gonna I wanna bunny ears this guy behind his back. Okay, that's a good one too. Oh, oh all right, well you we should let you finish your breakfast. Uh you got a big day ahead of you. Oh yeah, you know, I spent a lot of time in these woods. I'm I'm sure I'm gonna catch that Bigfoot today. If I don't catch it today, I'm gonna catch it today. Yeah. Well, um, well, call me. All right. I'll do that. All right. And I'm scoot. I'm trying to push everybody out. Let's go. I'm just like bye, hang. It's <laughs> like walk out the, the walk out the diner. All right. Bye. So abject horror outside. Yeah. yeah. Who's got who has the photo for breakfast? Of course. Yes. 
Who has the photo? I would imagine Sullivan because I, knowing Hank the way he is, he probably made sure Sullivan was on the end of whatever was going on and all the ladies were closest to him. Yeah. Yes, that is what happened. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sully, send that photo over to Cam. As soon as when we publish our story with our picture of Bigfoot, I want this. I want this picture with it. <laughs> you got it. This is going to be the day Hank Young missed Bigfoot. I think he just puts it in the group thread for everyone. Yeah. We're going to have to come up with a really good title for that. Something, something that makes his skin. Darcy, what'd you find in the truck? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. I don't need to do the accent anymore. Wow, you know. <laughs> and I'm also <laughs> fixing my shirt. Um, um, uh, uh, and she just sort of like goes through her phone and just shows the map on her phone. Um, also, don't be alarmed if there's a few boxes of uh, bullets in the back of the car. You, you stole his ammunition. I did. Like she's just like, yeah, no, I, I did. Um, also, he may not have Wi-Fi. Um, I broke the internet. And she starts listing off all of these um, things. The only thing he may notice before he drives off is that he no longer has an energy drink. Uh, First, he won't be driving off anytime. Well. It'll take a while. Oh yeah, that too. So, uh, I had Pockets pull his spark plugs. And knowing Pockets, he lost at least one somewhere in the ground. Pockets would apologize, but he's not going to. <laughs> I, I, I am so impressed. Bonuses, bonuses all around. Can you? Do, I'm. I'm ah. And she's sort of like in her head. She's like, I, I'm having something other than instant noodles tonight. Like it's that sort of feel. Let's head back over to the garage, I suppose. Okay, so you guys go over there and you hear this loud slam as Cassie puts down the hood of your van. And then as she's turning around, she sees you all and she's giving you a look. Okay, I don't think you were joking about your van being hit by lightning. No, I wasn't. I was entirely <laughs> serious. You should probably call someone to get a ride. You can't fix it. Ah, that's a lot of van to fix. You need an entire wiring harness for that van. Please? Mm -hmm. No, you know what I'm saying is it is going to cost a lot of your money to fix this van. Mm -hmm. This is when the insurance company just totals the car and walks off. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, probably want it out of your garage then. Well, I don't know if it's a rental. I mean, you guys are going to be tied up and stuff for a while. Also, tomorrow's a fourth. What are the chances they get this taken care of today? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So you can leave it here. I mean, I've got space. If I have to do a repair or something like that, I'll just tow it back outside. That's great. I appreciate it. Um, Wait, if we need to get in, though, and get something out of it, and our... <laughs> I just realized that in my head, what's going on in my head is, uh, I can't say, yeah, our friend is unconscious in the back because that would be bad. Yeah, she's gonna say, yeah, you do have to get your friend out of the van. I can't do yeah. that, because if I have to lock up, I mean, you can't leave a person locked in a garage all night. You know, actually, can you just tow it outside that way, if we're able to get someone to come down, we can, uh, over the, ho the the holiday, you don't have to come out and unlock it for she us. Just, 
Yeah, she just points at where it's at. She said, I can just leave it here. It's 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 outside. Yeah, it's like it's out yeah. past where the gas cool. pumps are and everything like that. So cool. All right. Well, thanks for taking a look at it. What do uh what do what do I owe you? No, I literally just opened up the hood and this is bad. <laughs> I mean, she points down on the ground and there's this like puddle of acid from the battery that's just like this, you know, going across oh. the ground. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll um, figure something out, I suppose. Okay. And if you need to like move your friend, um, I've got a couch inside the, if you want to just like stick him in there for now. Great. Good to know. And Darcy's sort of looking at like Cameron and Sullivan behind Joe. She's just like, so are we staying here tonight or are we, because Bill already has two seats in his car. I don't, I don't want to, I definitely don't want to stay here. We, uh, and we're only going to slow down Hank for a little bit. We've got, we've got to, we've got to go to where he was going and get there before he was going to get there. I don't know, maybe, um, I don't know. I want to, I want to try something. And Cameron gets this like idea in her head of like, maybe I can use magic to fix the truck. I don't know how any of this works. Okay, sure. You could try things. Uh, I don't, so I think what Cameron gets in her head is she goes up to Cassie and says, um, can I, here, I'll, I'll take the keys um, from you. Can I, can I have those back? Yeah, go ahead. Um, thanks. I, uh, you know, just for good measure, I'm going to try and. Yeah, you know the door locks don't work or anything, right? Um, that'll be fine. Uh. And is it, did they like leave any of the doors open or can like Cameron, she basically wants to get into the driver's seat. Yeah, all the doors have been left open at this point because closing them just would mean a lot more work. And so I guess she like maybe comes into the back, crawls over Lewis, maybe uh, sets a to-go container of food right next to him and like does like pass the food box and goes like, this will be ready for you whenever you're ready for it. And then climbs into the front seat. And what she wants to try and do is like close her eyes, think about projecting magical sparks into the truck and fixing it as she inserts the key into it. I'm going to say fixing a van with magic is level four difficulty. Okay. And I don't think you have a skill for this. So this I was like, I think exciting. maybe this is like a stretch of hedge magic. Um, so it's one of the things Cameron has, and it says you can like mend a broken object, but this is yeah. like a much bigger broken object. It's true. So it, it is in the feasible realm, but not in the practiced realm, I think. Okay. So I think Cameron is like, she's closing her eyes. She probably feels like Cassie looking at her, like, what the hell are you doing? And I want to put mm-hmm. two levels of effort into this and okay. use the advantage that I have. Okay. I am going to stipulate two things. Number one, yes, Cassie is looking at you like, what the hell? Number two, there is going to be a glow no matter what you do if you use that much effort. Acceptable. <laughs> All right. So Cameron puts the key in and tries to turn it and she'll focus everything she has into this. Okay. So that's the first roll. Yep. Okay. Now the hardest part is everyone knows this, this fan is total. It is absolutely, I mean, the battery is dripping onto the ground right now. So Cameron puts this key in, we get a, like a, nothing happens do you want to tell me how you engage sparkles uh i think they like the way she's thinking about this is she's like kind of like her her aunt taught her to like focus her energy up through the candle and up into the wick so she's like trying to focus magic through her arm and into the key and into the truck so maybe we see like a burst of sparks just like shoot out from under the hood and it probably looks really dangerous and kind of scary for a moment. And then we hear Candace go, ah, oh, shit. 
I think it works. Uh, so two things. Number one, the engine at no point turns over, but the van oh, no. does start rolling forward now suddenly. Number two, um, as far as you can tell, you have not fixed anything, but the van drives now. Um, are you they- telling? Are you oh. saying she magically hotwired the damn car? She did not fix anything, but she has now magically made the van drivable. <laughs> Hey, um, hey guys, um, the van works now. Um, if we get going, I think we can keep it moving. Cassie is looking around. What the <gasps> hell is wrong with you people? Don't you know how to be subtle? Um, uh, uh, I'll be right there. Say that again, Cassie. Look, I don't see people usually coming out and just magic in a van in the middle of the street. What the hell is wrong with you people? Wait, who said anything about magic? Okay, I can see the battery dripping out on the ground. Nothing turned over. The van is rolling. And your friend is sparkling. Um, you probably overlooked something. Don't you? Yeah, I probably overlooked something. Also, she points at Darcy. Look, if you were up to something, I would know about it. But this is not okay. You are going to draw a lot of attention we don't need, and there's some crazy-ass hunter that's driving around town right now, and this is really not a good idea. Um, the Attention that we don't need. Let's start with that. Let's start with we. Who's we? We, as in everyone who lives here in this town, everyone who likes it when their lives stay normal, and you guys, because frankly, I don't think you want everybody knowing that you just magic a van in the middle of the street. Yeah, but everybody doesn't know. Cassie, you know. Okay. Have you ever noticed how, like, when an electric car drives by, it doesn't make any sound, and it's really creepy, and, like, I, personally, those creep me out. But, like, look at your old, broke-ass van with a big burn mark on the hood, hood of it. What are you going to tell people when that goes driving around, making no sound, dripping fluids out? I'm not going to tell them anything. I'm going to drive past them. I, you're... Mountains out of molehills here, Cassie. It's like a spooky ghost pirate ship or something. <laughs> it would be... Like if we could get Guys, somebody to sort of Scooby-Doo van, seriously. If we get somebody to sort of airbrush that onto the side, say how did you say spooky ghost pirate ship van? Okay. You guys need to stay in Santa Cruz, where it's okay to be a total weirdo and just do whatever the heck you like. Because out here in Felton, we are in the woods, and it's kind of important we don't suddenly burn things down or get struck by lightning or let everybody know that we can do magic because out here people have guns and are weird. And also, like, we like things quiet. Are you just saying you'd like us to go? I am saying this is a lot of stuff. I don't generally pick people up on the side of the road after their van gets struck by lightning and then they magic their van back together. Hmm. We were talking about insurance claims a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got bad news and good news for you. Bad news is probably in the next 24 hours or so, there's gonna be a lot of magicking and very loud things happening around here. That's just kind of the way it goes. Good news though, um, Hank Young is going to need some repairs to his vehicle, probably going to be over in a little bit, and opportunity for you to charge a premium holiday weekend and all that. I'm not going anywhere near that guy. Well, Look, if you see some idiot redneck walking around shooting guns at things randomly in the forest, I don't know about you, I don't go trying to make that a part of my business. All right. Well, hey, it's it's your business. Just saying, probably going to need a lot of parts, labor, just just putting it out there. Look, don't go to the Discovery Museum over there, okay? You guys should not be anywhere near them. Um, 
Is it who's with me right now? I think everybody except Cameron and Lewis. Okay, yeah. I, I'm imagining Cameron doesn't know how this works at all, so she's making the car do very <laughs> slow <laughs> circles around the entire group. Darcy's well, probably watching just go around. This I don't really... know, oh, Josie. That sounds like maybe we do want to go to the museum. Yeah, that's super Perfect. suspicious, Cassie. Okay. I'm telling you, the people who run the museum are nice, normal people. And they don't, I have a barking dog. And they don't know anything about magic. And they're oh. not going to see a Bigfoot. Oh. They're just normal ass people. They've got a kid, they've got a dog. They don't need this. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm looking back at, at Darcy. That I'm thinking maybe we don't need to go to the museum then. Okay. You don't want to go to the museum. I mean, maybe we can stop by the gift shop later. If you guys want to talk about Bigfoot, come talk to me about Bigfoot. I can talk to you about Bigfoot. But again, <gasps> it's just a museum for normal people. Ah. Uh, we want to talk to you about Bigfoot. But also, we have a van slowly... Um, I don't know what we're going to do about this. Why don't I you just hop in? About it. And she stopped. Do we have to run and jump in that thing? Yes. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So officially, Cameron will not stop now, and she will make you all jump into it. She has no idea how this works. She's not yet confident she can make it slow down or go faster. So you're driving at five miles per hour in a big loop around this parking lot, around the gas pumps, and Correct. everybody jumps in. There's no reason this has to be a roll at all. Thank God. Can I hit the hot side of the van and be just straight? Please don't run me over. I can't imagine where on earth we will enjoy that going. So everybody is now in the van. Uh, so who is in the driver? Who is in the passenger seat next to Cameron? I, I okay. think I probably am. Uh, no, go ahead, Sully. Yeah, go ahead. You you got there before I did, so you got in. <laughs> I totally, I imagine this in like a split second of not chill. He's just like shotgun and he slides over the hood as she's slowly <laughs> rotating around. Oh my God, man. Darcy does that awkward stumble into the back of the open door, the sort of like, you know, when you stand there like, come on, you can do this. Like gears herself up on like two rounds to jump in. Um but she will immediately give Josie like, or at least show Josie where all of these boxes of bullets are as well. Yeah. Nice. And as I'm getting it, I'm like, oh, oh, so we're doing the shotgun thing now. Now we're doing the shotgun thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. The boss gets shotgun. Sully, just, all right. Well, normally I'm driving, I guess, today. <laughs> Is Cassie coming with us? She's in the back of the van right now, apparently. So, and she doesn't look happy about this at all. You guys are just so weird. What the heck is wrong with you all? Uh, we we were internet people. Yeah. Okay. Nodding and just smiling. She's like whispering in this van because this is just so weird. She's like keeping her voice down. Look, there's Bigfoots out here in the woods. It's a real thing. They're real Bigfoots. I don't see why on earth. I mean, it's like, whatever you guys are doing, it's just crazy. I don't see how that's going to help anybody. You're going to get someone shot. We'll be fine. I'm not worried about you. You guys can get shot. I'm talking about people who live in town. I'm talking about the Bigfoot. I don't really want to see anything happen to anybody else. We won't get anyone shot. Who's going to be shooting? That Hank Young guy, now that you've ruined his truck and taken all of his ammunition, do you know what people like that do when they get their ammunition back? They get all liquored up and they go looking for whoever they think who made them upset in the first place. Well, it's okay. He doesn't have a gun anymore either. How hard do you think he has to work to find a gun? Well, we have a head start. Come on! Like, he's just like, where's the positive attitude? I spent a lot of time out here in this forest, keeping the Bigfoot safe, making sure Mark Hansen and his wife and his kid and his dog 
don't get anything happening to them because they're idiots. They're just sweethearted idiots. And Phil, and I mean, there's like 30 people in this town. This is not okay. Why do you look after the Bigfoots? Because I know what's going on. Well, then what's going on? The Bigfoots are just normal creatures. They're not demons like I used to hunt, where I can tell what a demon smells like as soon as I see one. And Darcy uh, can't help but smile very broadly at this person. Look, things are really real out here, and these are people I care about. And obviously, you're not doing anything wrong, because if you were, I would have taken care of you on the side of the road. But there's a lot and of weird stuff around here. Darcy leans in with that smile. I'd really like to see you try. No, you don't. Don't act like you're tough, because I can send out the difference between a demon that's actually killed a person and one that hasn't. And you have not. Where I grew up, where I saw demons happening, I had to deal with if you're really a demon or if you just got born that way. I've had to make that decision before, and I don't want to make it again. And don't. I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah, but again, the crazy stunts you people are pulling could get people noticing. Do you really want to have Magic Van on the internet? I didn't do Magic Van. I had nothing to do with Magic Van. Hey, is there somewhere I should take this, or should I just keep doing loops? <laughs> you're going to do with yourselves if, if you need some place to crash you can crash at the service station i've got a couch you guys are gonna have to figure out how five people fit on a couch yourselves that's not up to me but like i don't really want you around anybody else if i can help it you know i'm we're not that bad yeah how did your van get hit by lightning hasn't rained all week it was probably a witch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I felt like there was probably something weird going on there. That's why I drove out to see what was going on with your truck. You don't just get flashes of lightning out of nowhere. Yeah, that, that makes us the good guys, though. Right, Cassie? We're... The witches wouldn't be after us otherwise, right? You know what I hate about cowboy movies is when you see like a normal town and then some idiot rides in and starts shooting stuff up. So then some other idiots ride in and start shooting those guys up. Nobody cares about the people that get killed in cowboy town. This is that town. Hmm. I, I yeah, go ahead. Darcy's just, you could see some emotions coming across her face, and she's sort of just having the, these weird moments, and when she said the words, like, I'd like to see you try, but also recoil backwards, it's almost like it's two different personalities jumping backwards and forwards, and she gets out of the truck. <laughs> uh, easy jump, no problems there. Uh, Darcy, where are you? What? Uh, uh. No, I will loop it back around. <laughs> There's one route. <laughs> Cassie, look, we we don't want to bring any trouble either. Um, I tell you honestly, all we want is a photograph, but but we don't want to be those. Stupid guys who come in and shoot the town up or make other people come in and do that either. Um, and I have no interest in seeing the Bigfoots. It's Bigfoots, not Big Feet. Anyway, no I, interest. I don't know. That's how they say it. They they talk? No, I mean the people who say Bigfoot. Oh, say right. Bigfoots. Got it. Okay. Got it. Um, no interest in seeing them get hurt at all. Um. What if there was a way we could work together? I mean, right now, I'd rather you're around me than anybody else. 
Uh, I'm just wondering if there was something we could do to um, to protect them, to keep people from coming here. Uh, I don't know. What if we? I mean, we could. We get the photo. We could. We could say we took it anywhere. I mean, is there a place that's geographically or similar that doesn't have, I mean, where a bunch of stupid hunters with guns started tromping around, they wouldn't be potentially hurting cryptids? She's shaking her head while well, this is going on. Since, and we're just going to keep talking because we're on our final shot. Um, Cameron, as you're pulling around for yet another loop, and as Darcy has now gotten out, Sullivan and Cameron, you have a good look at the Bigfoot Discovery Museum in the distance. There is now like an old white Dodge van that's pulled up out in front of it as well, like a family minivan. Um, and there's someone walking up to the door, opening it up. Looks like a middle-aged white guy. As this is going on, there is a ruckus coming from the back of the lifted black pickup truck in front of the diner as Hank Young like lifts himself up over the side of the truck and picks up his gun and says, what the hell? And as that is going on, he points his finger in the direction of the Bigfoot Discovery Museum where this man is now walking in the door and we cut away. Time flies, guys. Time flies. Oh, no. It really does. <laughs> oh, no. But um, as always, I should just remind everybody we've got closing credits so we don't have to say much and pass things off to the lovely Alice. Oh, hi. Um, yes, uh, thank you for that, um, Hans. That was absolutely amazing. Um, I love this show every single week. Um, please check out all the links coming up in chat now. Um, you can find our Discord, our YouTube, our merch, you name it. Um, please head over there. Also go to the Discord and let us know what you think of the show because I'm going to go scream over there in a minute. Um, otherwise, um, a huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors in the form of um, May Tempest and also Bird in the Storm, who we couldn't do this without. Otherwise, until next week, Keep evoking emotions and we will see you later. Bye.